Welcome to the 36th Annual Buchanan Bowl. I'm Mike McSorley here with Jay Prepchuk, broadcasting the game between the Carson Graham Eagles and the Hansworth Royals. The Carson Graham Eagles will be wearing the red and the Hansworth Royals will be in the blue. This game has been is in its 36th edition. It's in honor of James Buchanan, who is a longtime administrator and teacher at both schools. Jay, what do you think this game will bring us today? Hey, Mike, first of all, I'm excited to work with you and our cameraman, Mike, over there. And uh, you know what? Hey, last weekend was the Labor Day Classics and the CFL, outstanding games. But you know what? This game, I think, is going to be just as exciting as some of those games last weekend, Mike. Of course, I was part of many of uh, part of these games for many many years a player and a coach and boy I tell you I still get excited when I think about the Buchanan Bowl I still think about excited about how these kids get a chance to play against their arch rivals and uh, I'm just excited to work with you Mike and I'm excited to uh, call this game tonight yeah I think it's going to be a great tilt Jay Hansworth is stepping up in class this year it's their first year in this league and Carson coming off their semi-final appearance last year is looking for a big season Jay, I know you played in a couple of these games and you coached in a couple of them. I think you were the last coach, winning coach for the Hansworth Royals. Mike, you've been looking at the stats. Of course, the great program that Larry Donahoe, uh, if you haven't picked up a program, then make sure you uh, somehow get a chance to, get to view the program. Lots of great information in there. Yeah, I think it was 2016 when uh, the last Buchanan Bowl that I coached, we won two in a row my last couple of years at Hansworth. So, again, as I said, you know, very familiar with the excitement around this game. Very excitement, very excited about, uh, you know, just being part of it today. And uh, I tell you, it was exciting at that time. And uh, let's see if Hansworth can break that streak of five in a row from uh, Carson Graham, from the Carson Graham Eagles. It looks like we've got the coin toss. Carson has or Hansworth has deferred to the second half and Carson is elected to receive the ball. Anything like this doesn't take place without great sponsors. Our title sponsor today is the Omni Group. Our regular sponsors are the Donahoe Realty Group, Blair Photo, North Shore Law, Upper Level Plumbing, Western Campus Resources, Team Nike, Venue Kings, Coast Performance and Rehabilitation. And we want to thank all our sponsors and everyone that supports high school football. So right now we're just waiting for the teams to come onto the field. We've had the coin toss and we're ready to go on a beautiful day. It's 26 degrees here. A little bit of wind out of the south. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be a factor tonight. One thing about the way the configuration is of Confederation Park is the sun is kind of right over midfield. So it doesn't really, it's not usually a factor, even though it is a very hot day. And I do remember coaching in the Buchanan Bowl went on many of the hot days. And, you know, hopefully the players are hydrated uh, many times many different uh, years players would uh, be cramping up and have to sit out for a couple of plays here and there hopefully again the players um, have eaten properly hopefully the players are hydrated and they don't have to sit out at all especially in a game like today with Carson Graham as we know running such a potent offense and what Brian Brady calls it is Nassau which means he'll be he'll be on the go and he'll be uh, on the ball calling the plays from the sidelines, so the Hansworth defense has certainly got their work cut out for them tonight. Great, so Leo right. Yashima will put the ball in play for Hansworth, who will kick it off, and we've got Andrew McIntosh and Braylon McCooler back to receive. Okay, let's go. This is, uh, again, a big week. You know, it's, it's a busy week for everybody, of course, getting back to school and... Uh, Getting back to school and uh, the busyness of everything. Uh, these these players have had uh, a couple weeks of training camp. Last week, uh, uh, Hansworth did play Argyle, and uh, Carson Gra Graham did uh, play at Mowat. Here we go, Mike. Here we are, and we're ready for the kickoff. Leo Yashimi is about to kick. He's just waiting for the clock to get set, and there he goes. He kicks a little squibber up the line, and it's fielded by Break. Baker on the 38-yard line. Carson will put the ball in play first and 10 on their own 38. Always interesting, Mike, to see what kind of strategy the special teams coaches have. You know, do you want to kick it deep? Of course, the Carson Graham uh, deep guys are very, very dangerous return men. So Hansworth elects to just squib the ball and give Carson pretty good field position on their own 39-yard line to start this game. And Liam Marshall is back at quarterback for the, for the Carson Graham Eagles in the shotgun formation. The lines are down. We're ready to go here. And here he goes. The snap is back. A handoff to number 37. He's got a big hole over the left side. He gains about 20 yards down to the 42-yard line of the Royals. 
first what? and ten. Big pickup for Kai Nickel, the outstanding running back, middle linebacker for the Carson Graham Eagles. I talked to Kai last week, and he was super excited about this game. And there they go, Carson Graham yep. on the ball. Hurry up, offense. They're running it quick. They're just waiting for the referee to spot the ball. Here we go. The lines are down. We're ready to go. We've got some motion from the quarterback. Flips it over the lines. Well defended by Leo Yisham. Second down, 10 yards to go. The pass was intended to Namath. And we've got an, a flag early in this ball game. Might be just a pass interference against Hansworth. It looked like a little bit of early contact. Michael Westman, the veteran back judge here, is uh, discussing the call right now with the head linesman, uh, Tori Davis, experienced group tonight. Let's see the call. We've got a defensive holding call on number one. I'm sure that Carson will accept that. It'll be a five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And we've got, uh, talking to Alex Benning, a, a middle linebacker that I used to coach, he's actually the defensive coordinator, coordinator now for the Hansworth Royals. And he said he's going to come up and play very physical against those Carson Graham defenses. We saw that on the very first play. First down and 10 at the 29-yard line. We're ready for the snap of the ball. We've got motion from number seven across the field. Dropping back to pass, rolling to his right, looking down the field. Everyone's covered. He's now taken off, and he stopped for about a two-yard gain. That was Marshall on the carry. And that's where Liam Marshall is very, very dangerous. Of course, Liam last year as a grade 11 quarterback with the Carson Graham Eagles had an outstanding season, but he's not afraid to take off and run with that football. And here we go again. Carson is playing very quickly here. No motion on this play. A handoff to number 14 up the middle. Juke somebody. As on down to about the three-yard line. No, the 13-yard line. I apologize for that. And here we go, Carson Graham again. On hands the ball. Hands were really trying to defend the run. Yep. Or trying to defend the pass, and Carson successful on the run. First and ten here. And everybody's down. They're set. And we've got a pass over the middle. Complete for a touchdown. No signal yet. No signal yet. Yes, there it is. A touchdown. Did you catch the number of who caught looks that, like, It looks like, I think it's Eric Town, number three, outstanding. Again, a veteran yep. receiver. It is number three, Eric Town, who, uh, again, so many of these players, Mike, have been veterans of this Carson Graham football program. They started football here in grade eight and, you know, and are enjoying their last year. And uh, Eric Town, who I've got to know throughout the years, is an outstanding player with Team BC and so on. And, again, Eric Town doing a nice job on that slant route. Liam Marshall putting the ball right on the money. And now they're going for two here. Liam Marshall back in the shotgun formation once again. We've got motion from number seven across the field. Handoff faked up the middle. Thrown to number seven when he switched back. Caught. No, they call it incomplete. Two-point conversion fails. We've got a 6 to nothing score. Carson moved down very quickly in a minute and 17 seconds to score that first touchdown. The hurry-up offense seemed to have the Hansworth Royals on their back foot the whole way, Jay. Well, absolutely, and that's not the first team that's certainly... Uh been uh, you know having to defend that uh, Carson Graham offense again Brian Brady the football the coach the head coach of the uh, the Carson Graham football program just does an outstanding job kind of a disciple of the Oregon State Oregon uh, duck uh, football program where it's just go 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 it's hurry up it's really difficult to defend that type of offense because a you've got to call the signals from the line of scrimmage so it's very difficult to uh, design your blitzes and to blitz the quarterback and to get different coverages in as well so Alex Banning certainly in the experienced uh, defensive coordinator for the Hansworth Royals as we've talked about all week again again he's you know wanted to bring some pressure and wanted to play that press man-to-man -man defense and here we are Carson's ready to kick off Leo Yoshima and oh here's the kickoff it's fielded by Joe Canuco fields it cleanly he's moving up the field he's down he's crossed the 30 yard line up to about the 36 yard line where Hansworth will take over first and 10. Jay, what can we expect from the Hansworth offense today? Well, they're going to play a spread offense. They're not necessarily the same as Carson in the, in the sense that they go on the ball in a hurry-up offense, but they do like the spread formation, so they'll go two receivers, two by two, a doubles formation, two receivers to each side. They'll go with a trips formation, three receivers to one side, one receiver flanked to the outside, and uh, led by their outstanding quarterback, Shane Brenham, Brenham, who we will be talking about all night, all day today, Mike. So Shane's back in the shotgun formation. He's got it back to his right. 
Snap comes forward, hands off, and number 22, Oliver Parr dropped in the backfield quickly. So we have a second down and 12 yards to go. Blitzing linebacker from the Carson Graham Eagles, Poya Dorandash, the, uh, again, another veteran coach here, the defensive coordinator for the Carson Graham Eagles, electing to come out with a blitz on the very first play. He's got that 3-5 front, so very difficult to try to figure out who's going to be coming and who's going to be blitzing. So the lines are down. We've got the snap coming back. We've got rolling out to his left-hand side. He's to his right-hand side, throws it to his left across his body, complete to Yoshima for about a seven-yard gain. We've got third down and five yards coming up. So we'll, we'll, sorry, Mike, we'll see a lot of rollout pass here from, uh, again, the outstanding athlete at Shane from that quarterback position, and you're going to see him, again, left-handed, rolling out. He can, he's such a tremendous athlete, and you can see that he's got just such a quick release, and he's going to try to find that open receiver and uh, pick, up, uh, pick up the first down on this third down play. Great, so it's third and about five yards to go. He's back in the backfield. He's got Oliver Parr flanked to, to him. We've got some motion coming to the right. We've got a penalty here. We've got, I think, some motion. Carson's saying there's motion on the offensive line by Hansworth. They're going in, the officials are talking about it, seeing what we've got. This would bring up a long third down if it is against the Hansworth Royals. Yeah, just yep. a little bit anxious here. The Hansworth Royals is, again, you know, there's these early game jitters, of course, Mike, such a big football game here. And we remember that the Hansworth Royals, out of their five offensive linemen, 11 of them are, or sorry, four of them are in grade 11. Yeah, that's a very young team that they feel they're fielding today. And it is a step up in class for this team. So here we go again. We've got number seven, Nielsen, back in the... Uh, in the shotgun again. Oh, Brynham. Number seven, Brynham. <laughs> he's the left-hander now. He's got, he's got par flank to his left-hand side. The clock's been wound back in, so now we've got a third down and almost 10 yards to go. Watch for a roll-up pass to his left-hand side. Good call. And we've got another bit of movement there. Carson looked like they were coming with a blitz, and once again, it looked like Hansworth flinched. That's, as you said, these inexperienced offensive linemen. That's right, Mike. And so what's happened here is Carson Graham's kind of playing around on the, on the defensive front. They do what, they're called, what we call stemming, is they kind of move around a little bit. And, of course, on defense, you can move around like that before the ball is snapped. Offense, you have to be set, and you can't move. So, again, a little bit of trickery on the defensive side of the football from Poya, the defensive coordinator. So now Hansworth has to make it to the 45-yard line for a first down. Benham back in, back in shutdown gun formation again, rolling to his left, throws it out to the flat, and it is incomplete, well covered on the play by number one, but we do have a late flag coming in. Could be pass interference on Vermouth, which would be a first down for Hansworth. Let's see what the officials say. Yeah, again, it's going to be pass interference, and I'm not sure now in high school football, let's see what they call here, but it yeah. is definitely which... which is it pass interference? Is a holding again? We yeah. had a holding call against Hansard, but in high school football, um, Let's we'll see, see what, what the we'll see what they call. Again, experienced crew here: Tory Davis, the head referee; uh, Ted Barania. Uh, sorry, Jay, yep. to interrupt you, but yes. it is a first down for Hansworth on the penalty. So they get a brand new set of downs. Eight minutes and forty-two seconds left in the game with uh, Carson Graham Eagles leading six to nothing over your Hansworth Royals. Steve McWinney, just to finish off as far as the referee is concerned, Tim Letterman, Michael Westman, and the timer is uh, Damian Terrell. Thanks for that, Jay. Finham back, back in the shotgun again with Parr onto his right-hand side this time. And he f gives it to Parr going around the left side and gets wrapped up quite quickly by number 44. Samuels with the tackle. And once again, a stunting linebacker, Jay. Yeah, nice job again. They're going to just conf try to confuse that young Hansworth Royal offense with that three-man front. That means they've got basically five linebackers, four linebackers that they can bring from any direction. They've got the outside linebackers that can, of course, blitz. They've got inside guys that can blitz. And it's very, very confusing to play against that 30 defense. Yeah, they seem to have a little bit of trouble. We now have second down and about 13 yards to go with the ball on the 41-yard line. 
We've got some motion coming our way. Brynham's back, and he is wrapped up very quickly. He sacked. It looked like they had a meeting at the quarterback. The whole defensive line got in there, and that's a loss of another four yards. Now we're looking once again. Hansworth backed up with a long third down coming up. Third down and 16 yards to go. And talking to Darren Benning, the head coach of the Hansworth Royals, he's also the offensive coordinator. He was concerned, of course. He's saying that, you know, he's hoping that his offensive line, led by Big tackles, Sean Yim and Carter Elliott could kind of hold off that pass rush from the Carson Graham Eagles. But like you said, Mike, there was three or four Eagles in on the sack on that particular play. Yeah, no real time for him to even set up and look downfield. Brimmons back in the shotgun. We haven't seen a quarterback under center as of yet. Carson Graham shifting the line again. Brimmon rolling to his right. He's left-handed, remember. Whips it downfield. He's got a wide open receiver. Oh, that's a big play. That's... That's about a 45-yard completion to number number two, Seth Malcolm. No, number nine, I'm sorry, to Angus August Portal with the reception. That breathes some life into the Hansworth offense. It's first down and 10 on the 21-yard line going in for Hansworth. Absolutely. That's a huge play. And, Mike, good job of you. It's hard to see. There's no numbers on these on the field here, of course, right? So it's very difficult to read exactly how far a certain play goes. But August Portal showing his tremendous speed going down the right sideline for big first down. We've got Brim rolling to his left here. He's left-handed. Remember, he's taken off to run. He just kind of gingerly steps out of bounds for a one-yard gain, making sure he doesn't get hurt. He was forced out by McCooler from Carson. So we've got second down, nine yards to go on the 19 yard line. Yeah, and again, it's showing his athleticism and uh, many people do know that, of course, Shane Brenham is an outstanding baseball player. He actually, I had a good chat with him yesterday at Hansworth. What a lovely, lovely young man. We had a nice chat about, uh, he's a great baseball player, ranked number one pitcher, left-handed pitcher in all of Canada for his age category. Wow, he's got a big future in sports. He's now back in the shotgun again, Brim, with Parr flanked to his right-hand side. He's rolling to his right here. Remember, he's left-handed, throws across his body. Looks like he's got an open receiver, but just misses the connection. That was uh, an attempt to Yoshima. That'll bring up third down and nine yards to go. Yeah, just outside the reach of Yoshima. Uh, Shane put that ball out there very nicely. A great call knowing that Carson Graham is probably going to be in a man-to-man -man defense down in that area. Of course, a very popular play, an inside receiver running a corner, a flag route. Many of the CFL teams love to run that play inside the scoring zone. So Yoshima back late to the huddle, just trying to make sure he's got the right play. He's got the play from his receiving friends. Brimman is back to... Back in the shotgun, par to his right. Here we go. Fake to par, rolling to his right, to his left-hand side. You can see the arm talent he has. It's a completion for about a six-yard gain to par. That'll bring up a fourth down and really the first decision we've had to make this time. Absolutely. Let's see what Darren Benning has to say here. I would believe that Darren Benning is going to go for this in a fourth and three situation. He's got a lot of confidence in his offense, and certainly Darren's going to go for this. Darren Benning is going to go for this on a fourth and three. So as you say, Mike, you know, with six minutes and uh, 11 seconds left in the first quarter, first big decision here for the Hansworth Royals. And here they go. They're, line, they're breaking the huddle now. They've got Three, three coming out to the short side of the field on the left-hand side. And remember, our quarterback is left-handed. Par flanked to his right. Oh, we've got a whistle here. Timeout. We've got timeout. And which way is the timeout going? Hansworth looking at the defense. They decided to call a timeout, Jay. So you've been a coach in this situation. What do you do when you see that formation? What's the thought to call that timeout? Well, I think, again, you know, what Darren Benning's trying to do there is he's just, you know, a smart move on Darren's part. Of course, you have three timeouts per half, and he just wanted to kind of see exactly what that defense is going to do, what kind of posture they're going to be in as he lines up. Are they going to stay in that 30 front? Are they going to bring that those outside linebackers up to create a, a 50 front? Are they going to play man-to-man? -man? What's the coverage? What's the what, what's the you know the posture of the uh, defensive back? Are they playing inside leverage, outside leverage? So I know a that's a lot. To see. A lot of things going on. So do you, do you think that he might just come back and call the same play, hoping Carson switches their defense? 
I'm thinking that he's going to, you know, again, he's just going to get August to roll, or sorry, get Shane to roll out here. And if he's probably telling Shane right now, if you get a chance to see an opening, then you, you want to take this. Look for maybe a quarterback draw, look for a quick slant, but he probably wants to get the ball out of Shane's hands fairly quickly. So here we go. He's got three now to the far side of the field, a little more room to operate. He's got the tight end coming in motion. We've got another whistle here. The referees are kind of meeting for a second to make sure everybody's set and ready to go. We've got three flanked out to the right-hand side. Pars flanked to just in his right. We've got motion coming down to the left. Here's the snap, a low snap. It looks like a quarterback sweep. Give it to your best athlete. Oh. And it is looks like he was stopped short of the first yeah, down. Oh, boy, it's, Mike. It's we might have to measure this one. And the sticks are right there, of course. Yeah, right? so it won't take long for the measurement. Oh, Tory Davis did not. Oh, he uh, didn't even look for a measurement. He gave him the first down. It's first and 10 on the, about the 10-yard line. Yeah, that makes sense. They were just outside the 20 when they yeah. started this drive. So, yeah, good call by the officials. Good spot, I think, too. It's always hard to get those spots with where the ball goes out of bounds. I like that call. I, you know, when you have an athletic quarterback like that, it's very hard to defend that extra person. And it's very hard to defend, especially when you have the running back as a lead blocker. Now they're in a tight formation on the right-hand side with three receivers, one receiver down to the left. We've got Parr in the backfield. Yoshima motioning up to the top of your screen. They fire it on the inside man to number five, Cohen Ames, for a gain of about eight yards, which is a really good first down play. Yeah, and again, Shane does a good job of uh, at his quarterback position, knowing that Carson Graham is going to bring a blitz, and they certainly did bring the middle linebacker on that particular play. And just a quick drop, three-step drop, and get that ball out of his hands quickly on a breakout pass. And uh, good call by Coach Benning, well executed by the Hansworth Royals, knocking at the Carson Graham door here with, uh, what is it, Mike, five? 5.33 left. There, you got better eyes than I do. 5.33 <laughs> left. They've, Carson, his defense has been on the field a long time, and we did talk about the heat, so it could be a factor later. Brynham back in the shotgun formation. Parr straight behind him this time. They've got a pitch, an inside handoff to Parr, and he's wrapped up quickly in the backfield. That was Liam Marshall coming in to make that, that stop. He is the quarterback as well, and big play by him on defense. Yeah, Hansworth just running a little counter play, trying to do a little misdirection, faking the toss to the wide side of the field, pulling the backside guard, but a nice job by the Carson Graham defense to defend that play. So we've got third down and seven yards to go. Hansworth needs to make something positive happen to give them an, a touchdown or a decision on fourth down. They've broken the huddle again. They've got three coming up to the left hand side to the right hand side of the field, the top of your television screen. Parr is flanked is to the quarterback's right. They're ready to go here. We've got motion coming down to the left. We've got Liam running around. It looks like that quarterback sweep that they did for the first down. We've got a flag on the play. We've got Neil, we've got Bremen wrapped up for about a four yard loss, but let's check what the flag was. Yeah, this is gonna be important down here, Mikey. We we know that in you know in big games like this. Uh, you know, all three facets of the game, offense, defense, special teams, but, of course, turnovers yeah. and penalties. Both coaches mentioned that to me when I talked to Coach Brady, when I talked to Coach Benning. So it is a holding call here, Jay. So it would bring up either third and 11 or second and 20. Oh. What would you do yeah. here? Uh, it looks like they're going to decline it. I think that's a smart move to decline it. Actually, it brings up fourth down. I apologize. So it's fourth down. It looks like the kicking units come in. Hansworth's going to go for three points here. Yoshima is their field goal kicker. Yeah, and by the indication, well, we didn't really get a in good indication from the opening kickoff because they squibbed it, right? Yeah. But we had a left, oh, this is a different, looks like a, okay, left-footed kicker. Yeah, Yoshima yeah, is yeah. the left-footed yeah. kicker, gotcha. and he's ready to go. And Brimham is the uh, holder. I wonder if they have a fake in play. Here we go. 38-yard field goal. 38-yard field goal, and he missed oh. it just a little bit to the right-hand side of the goal post. Just pulled it a bit. Like a golfer, he just yeah. hit a bit of a hook. Just like looked like one of our golf shots there, Michael. We uh, were going to lead into that. Mike uh, and I, of course, are good golf buddies. And when we uh, see a hook like that, we see that uh, certainly just kind of overextending a little bit. But uh, here we go. Carson Graham on the ball, and they are going to be ready to uh, take yep. their second possession. But entertaining ball game so far, Mike. Yeah, and they don't... Uh, you don't have a kick after that, so it's just first and 10 at the 20-yard line for Carson. And once again, it's hurry up. They've got, it's three minutes and 47 seconds on the clock. Let's see how quickly they move this fo football this time. Yeah. 
Marshall back looking deep, looking deep. Nothing's open, he's flushed out of the pocket. He's rolling to his left and then he's brought down quickly. So that was a good negative play for Hansworth on the first play of the drive. Malcolm with the sack. Absolutely, Carson Graham, Brian Brady running one of his favorite plays, four verticals, but Hansworth did an outstanding job of covering and Leon Marshall didn't have anybody to throw to, Mike. Second down, 13 yards to go. Can't Carson once again over the ball, fakes the inside. Oh, no, gave it to the first back. Number 37, rumbling down the field. He's a really tough runner to bring down. He gets all the way down to the 47-yard line. That was Kyle Nickel with the, with the handoff and the first down run. Yeah, big 23-yard gain for Kai Nickel. Again, Hansworth is so conscious of the, the pass of the Carson Graham Eagles, and sometimes it's tough to defend both. And here we go. They're over the ball again. They're running quickly here, this Carson Graham offense. A quick pass out to number 85 on the left-hand side. He's breaking tackles again. Hansworth's got to get this guy on the ground. That was a big completion to number 85. And that's going to be one of Carson Graham's play. If you, if Carson Graham is allowed to run that play all day, just a little flanker screen, receivers blocking, just a little screen that, that is one of uh, Brian Brady's favorite football plays. You're going to see that play a lot tonight. Here we go. Carson's over the ball once again. First down, 10 yards to go on the 48-yard line. We've got motion from number five coming up to the top of your screen. Oh, we've got a bad snap. Marshall's on it. And that's a big, big loss. That's the kind of play that Hansworth's defense needed. It's all the way down to the 30-yard line. Wow, that is a loss of 23 yards. So now, what play do you call on second and 33? <laughs> yeah, you, there's not too many plays in the playbook that uh, would take care of this one here. But look for Carson Graham just to go with uh, four verticals and Liam just to throw it up. Interesting, Hansworth's playing a press coverage even though it's third and long. Wow, they don't even need to uh, huddle on this play. So third down, long, long yardage. The referees have stopped the clock to make sure everybody's set again. Let's see what they're doing now. I think that what they did, yes, they did have the down marker wrong. So it is only second down now. So it's second down Good. and 33 yeah. yards to go. Good pickup, Mike. Here we go, motion coming down towards us. Watch for the deep pass to Namath. Ah, oh. throws it over them. Over the middle to name it. No. Nope. He broke, he breaks it. He's got a good chance to go. And there he goes, touchdown. <laughs> wow, how wow, about that? What a, that's what a the, play. That's the play I would call on second. second and long, right there, a little crossing route. Why not, 70 yards later, Carson wow. Graham, Eagles, go up by two touchdowns. And wow, just like that, Liam Marshall strikes an, again. And boy, I tell you, can we pick up who the receiver was on that play there? Yeah, number seven. Was it? it was Nemeth who got the touchdown just on the little crossing route and they did score in under two minutes. This Carson Graham offense is quick and potent. I talked to Nemeth, I talked to Finn before the football game. Actually, I'll tell you this little story right after the two point convert They're attempt. They're going for two points here. Fake the inside handoff. Marshall rolling, 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 flips it and incomplete. That's the second two-point conversion that's been failed, so it's only a 12-0 lead. So Carson Graham Eagles 12, Hansworth Royals nothing with a minute and 28 seconds left. F Finn Namath, a veteran receiver, of course, actually a great kid. He worked at our uh, flag football camp this summer and was uh, did an excellent job of coaching the young little uh, football players in North Vancouver. And I saw Finn walk in today, and I talked to him. He said, he came up to me, he said, Coach, Aiden got a touchdown today, and Aiden, his brother, older brother, plays for McMaster, and so he got a touchdown today, and now I said, you better get a touchdown today as well. He said, I'm going to get a couple today, Coach. So there's his first one. Let's see if he can get another one as this ball game progresses. But again, a great family, the Namath family, um, just outstanding people. Mom and Dad, very supportive of, uh, of their two boys, two football players. I know they took a, they've taken a couple of trips back to Hamilton to watch Aiden play football with uh, McMaster. Stefan Pat Patasic, who runs an outstanding program, is the head coach at McMaster. I think we've got a few BC boys out playing football in McMaster. So there's the name of the show. Uh, again, it uh, has been part of Carson Graham football for many, many years. And... Uh, it's going to be sad to see Finn leave, but hopefully he's going to continue his football career after playing for the Eagles this year. So Nichols is ready to kick off the football to Yoshima and Kanuka back to receive. It goes to Kanuka, fields the ball on his 12-yard line, heading out to his right-hand side. He's moving around the corner, 
gets out to the 30-yard line. I think they'll mark him out of bounds right around the 30. It'll be first and 10 for the Hansworth Royals with a minute and 13 seconds left in the quarter. I'd just like to once again thank the title sponsor, Omni Group, and our other sponsors, the Donahoe Realty Group, Blair Photos, North Shore Law, Upper Level Plumbing, Western Campus Resources, Team Nike, Venue Kings, Coast Performance and Rehabilitation, and we'd also like to thank our community partners, Delaney's Coffee, Nestle's Food, the City of North Vancouver, and of both the parents of all the football players of Carson and Hansworth. Good job, Mike. You get that all in one breath? Ah, I'm trying. <laughs> little cardio work yesterday to try and get it so that I'd be able to speak properly. Here we go. Hansworth has the ball here. I think it's a very important drive for the Royals. What do you think, Jay? Absolutely. Okay, we're snapping it. We've got a little option route there. Pass, toss back to par. He leans forward for a buddy yard gain. We've got second down, nine yards to go. Yeah, just showing the versatility again. You know, it's a tough offense to defend, that spread offense when you've got such an athletic quarterback. And when they put in their option play and have the option series, again, it just takes time to prepare to make sure that you are taking care of, you know, all the offensive players in the field. Carson Graham, again, doing an excellent job of uh, limiting that gain to two yards on first down. So here we go. We've got second down, eight yards to go for the Royals. We've got... Brynham back, looking over the line. Motion coming again. Brynham looking to his left, throws it deep. A little jostling downfield, but no flags. They said it was just hand fighting, no penalty on that play. That pass was attempted to Cohen Ames. That'll bring up third down, eight yards to go. A tough play call for any offense. Cohen Ames running from his inside slot position into the boundary, runs a wheel route and trying to fool that Carson Graham defense, but they were right there. The coverage was excellent in that particular play. But again, a wheel route from the inside receiver, Cohen Ames. Let's see what Coach Darren Benning has up on uh, third, and yeah, third and eight, Mike. So let's see if we've got a little bit of trickery somewhere in the playbooks tonight. Yep, this will, could be the last play of the quarter as there's only 28 seconds left in the quarter. Hansworth has dominated the ball in this quarter, but Carson has had two drives and two touchdowns. Here we go. Third down, eight yards to go. We've got Liam rolling to his right. He's got oh. Wrapped up quickly. The ball came out. Carson Graham recovered. So that was a fumble by, by Brynham and recovered by Carson. That'll bring up first down and goal to go for the... Carson Graham Eagles. Actually, it's just outside. It's on about the 10 and a half yard line. 18.6 seconds left in the quarter. So we will be running. We will be running one more play. And of course, we'll see Carson on the ball quite quickly here. Yeah, that's Braylon from his defensive end position that Carson or Hansworth tried to block him, but he had contained, did a great job of coming in and sacking Shane on that particular play. Marshall back in the shotgun once again. Looking over the defense. Here we go. Fakes the handoff, throws a little quick slant route. There's your second touchdown of the game for Nemeth. Yeah, absolutely. There he is. Got his second touchdown of the football game. And that's how quickly the Carson Graham Eagles can strike. Just like that. A little RPO action, faking that inside run play. Liam Marshall reading the linebacker, noticing the linebacker was coming up, blitzing on that play. Hit Finn on that slant. Play, a play that they have run so many times over the last five years. I bet you those two guys could run that play in their sleep, Mike. Wow. Here we go. And now we've got uh, another two-point conversion attempt for the Carson Graham Eagles. Let's see what they do this time. They give it this time on the, to Nichols up the middle. And, yes, he is able to score the two-point conversion. A late flag came out. Let's see what this is all about. Let's see. Not sure if the point will stand or not. The officials are huddling to tell us what's going on. Did you see anything there, Jay? I, I didn't, didn't see anything. It looks like maybe a little bit of rough play, maybe a little bit of uh, tempers uh, kind of flaring a little bit, but the referee's talking about this, and uh, interesting to see what that call is. Yeah, let's see if the two points remains on the board or not. The two-point conversion is good, yeah. making the score 20 to nothing. We've got a personal foul against the Carson, Carson Graham, Graham Eagles. Interesting, going to be applied to the kickoff. Kind of interesting how penalties can be applied. I don't know if you watched that Clemson game the other night, right? And uh, there was a, what was a personal foul on the quarterback, right? Yes. Personal foul on the quarterback, 
against uh, Clemson, but they didn't call it. It they, was a dead ball foul. It was a dead ball foul. Which was really interesting. I had not seen that before, and I think the announcers in the game it didn't make me feel bad because they said they didn't really understand it either. So the kickoff now looks like it'll be moved back. The officials have to mark this off, I believe. Yeah. No, it, oh, maybe the oh. no personal foul, Carson. Now yep, it comes. Now, oh, okay. now it'll be marked Mr. off. Mr. So Westman has to administer yes. the. Uh, Mike, again, uh, sorry, Mike. I apologize. Sometimes you know the referees. I know doing the uh, the championship games last year, some of the referees are are on me a little bit about the rules and so on. Right, and I apologize if we haven't got the rules quite straight. But I didn't talk to a referee today about that, and I was like, well, I watch the CFL, I watch the NFL. I watch college football. I watch high school football. I watch minor football. I watch community football. Sorry if I don't. Have yeah, and rules. all the <laughs> and there's just little tweaks to all the I rules. I know exactly. So now there's. It seems like the officials are a little confused about where this ball should be. They've marked off 15 yards, and now it looks like they're going to place it down on the 15-yard penalty. So it'll he'll Nichols will be picking kicking off from his own. 25-yard line. This could give the Royals a good opportunity. They might be able to bring this all the way out to midfield. Let's see what happens. We've got Yoshima and Kanuka back. Kanuka, they seem like they're kicking to Kanuka. He fumbles the kick, oh. and goes and picks Whoa. it up, locks it basically, and then gets swallowed up. And that is the worst field position we've seen from the Hansworth Royals. But a penalty is on the play. We've got a flag that came in a little late. We'll see what that is. Looked like he might have got a bit of a face mask there. Let's see if that's the call. Yeah, yeah right. personal foul call. It is a face mask against the Carson Graham Eagles. Good That'll be up. a 15-yard penalty against the Eagles. So the Royals will probably move it out to the 40-yard line. And that's probably going to be the end of the first quarter, looks like. Mike, we get a chance here to talk about uh, BC High School football. Wow, you know what, Mike, in the last couple of years since COVID, it's really, really grown. It's expanded. We see so many more kids playing football, and I think it's just fantastic to see the growth of football, community football, minor football, high school football, so many more kids playing. The uh, president of high school football, Glenn Donaldson, just wanted to say that, hey, uh, high school football is a vibrant, growing sport in BC, providing students with athletes with outstanding experience and teamwork. Oh, we got another play here. Yeah, we've got eight seconds we... still left on the clock ah, because it oh, stops the right. clock. Eight. Yeah, eight yeah. seconds left oh, on the clock. Okay. So this Thanks this for... will be the last play of the <laughs> Sorry, quarter. Mr. Donaldson, I think, I'll get back to you. I think we've said <laughs> Thanks, it's Mike. been the last play of the quarter for the last three plays, so maybe we'll get it right this time. The snap is back. Brigham, looking over the field, throws it over to incomplete. Just a little behind his receiver. That was Malcolm has attempted. He attempted the pass to Malcolm. That will be the end of the first quarter. The score, Carson Graham 20, Hansworth Royals 0. We'll be back in a minute. Jay will continue with his PSA for high school football. No? I'm going. <laughs> I thought we were breaking for commercial there. But anyways, yeah, Glenn Donaldson, a good friend of mine, of course, who now is the head football coach of the West Vancouver Highlanders. Glenn's going to do an outstanding job with that program. Many great athletes have come out of uh, West Van High School. I, I know that at one time, West Vancouver High School, their football program with Gary Schwartzfeger, Rog Roger Cronquist, of course, uh, many players from the... West Van High football teams went on to play NCAA football and, of course, professional football. But Glenn, as the president, is excited about the vibrant, growing sport that we have. Outstanding coaches, players, and supporters. Um, you know, just going to keep up that long tradition of high school football, uh, culminating, of course, in that first Saturday at BC Place, Mike. Of course, that's always an exciting time. And uh, the playoffs, usually, I know they get the semifinals, the and the finals, sometimes the quarterfinals are in there as well. We're going to see how our BC Lions do this year, of course, right? And uh, the BC Lions with all the success and uh, not only on the field, but off the field with the new owner, Amar Doman, uh, doing a great job with, uh, you know, building the Lions back up. And so we'll see what happens with BC Place. I know they've got it booked definitely for the finals that first Saturday of December. Make sure you mark that off. Full day of high school football, the championship Saturday at BC Place. And here we go. We've got second down, 10 yards to go for a bit of a reset. Hansworth on their own 41-yard line. They've now switched, and they're moving from your left to right on your TV screen. The ball is snapped. Bremen looking deep. Throws. Oh, just out of the reach 
a pretty good pass, but Portal could not bring it down. Well, that'll bring up a third down, 10 yards to go. The, uh, the, it's beautiful weather here. The one thing that's interesting and unique about this game is you notice that both of the teams are wearing their dark jerseys. It makes it a little harder to pick up some of the numbers occasionally, but I'm doing my best out here. Yeah, and it's just a little bit of a glare here too from that uh, from that field. But it is, uh, yeah, it's definitely a challenge for you, Mike. I'm glad I'm not doing your job. Certainly, I get to tell you what happened. You're getting to tell us. Uh, you're getting to tell us what happened. I'm saying why it happened. There you go. Here we go. It's third down, ten yards to go. They pitched it, pitched it in the backfield to Kanuka. Kanuka gains close to the first down. We might have a measurement here. Let's see where they spot the ball. Oh, let's see, he hasn't put it down yet. Here it's right just over the, uh, it looks like he's about, about two and a half feet short. We've got a fourth down coming up, another decision to be made. Looks like no, no, nobody's coming on for Hansworth in the kicking team, this will be fourth down. Do you think they have yeah. a play to go under center here, Jay, or will they be in the shotgun even on fourth and short? Oh, I think they're going to stay in shotgun, and they're going to try to put the ball in Shane's hand just around a quarterback sweep. They've got tri tight trips, toss to the right-hand side or quarterback sweep to the right-hand side. There you go. Kanuka's in the backfield with him. Oh, oh no. snap through the legs. Oh, that's a, that's a heartbreaker. That kills the drive. That's just a tough call play for Hansworth. So Brenham was tackled on on their own 34 yard line. Carson Graham will take over, leading 20 to nothing. Uh, that's just a backbreaker, Jay. Boy, I tell you, at this time of the football game, when it's third and two, and uh, you know, a must have situation there for the Hansworth Royals, just unfortunate the snap was a little bit low. And I tell you, I know as a quarterback, when you are in that situation, there's just nothing you can do. Yep, and now Carson, once again, over the ball in a hurry. 11 minutes and two seconds left in the second quarter. We've got Marshall back. Marshall gets the ball. He's looking downfield. Takes a little shot over the middle. Short arms it to Nemeth. That was that slant play again, Jay. Yeah, exactly. The same play they ran the touchdown on in the first quarter. Just Nemeth, the wide receivers just clearing out. Nemeth coming underneath, knowing he's got man-to-man -man coverage, feeling that uh, Nemeth can do a good job of defeating that defender. He was open. Liam just put that ball a little bit low. Here we go. We've got second down, 10 yards to go. Marshall in the backfield, Nemeth coming in motion this way. Hands off in the middle to Nichols. Nichols was brought down very quickly by number 21, Pove. He's a captain of the Hansworth Royals. Yeah, exactly. And one of the uh, important points about this game today, Mike, talking to Alex Banning and Darren Banning, uh, Harrison Young, unfortunately, the final linebacker for the Hansworth Royals, is not able to play due to injury. Mm. That's always tough when you lose players early in the season. Marshall's back, ready to go. They're in the hurry up as always. Carson gets the ball. Marshall looks deep. He's throwing deep to the f wide receiver. Oh. oh, just out of Nemeth's hand. That would have been a hat trick for Nemeth. That ball was in the air a long time. Brings up a fourth down. First time hands were forced to fourth down from Carson. Doesn't look like they're bringing on any substitutes. Looks like Carson's going to go for it, Jay. Yeah, Carson Graham, Brian Brady again, kind of the gambler here. He doesn't punt very often. And when he does punt, he usually punts just from his regular formation and just wow. has Liam kind of pooch punted from his shotgun position. But here we I go. would assume he's going to go for it here. Look for the crosser. Oh, oh and it no. looks like hands were jumped, giving five free yards to Carson. Oh, that's a gift. Yep, that's, that'll bring up third down, nine yards to go. Still a long ways for Carson to go here. Yeah, it is against Hansworth, the five-yard penalty. They'll mark that off. Let's see if Carson switches their play here. They're still, they haven't come back and, or changed the formor, formation. Let's see what Coach Brady's on. He's keeping that same play. Look for a crosser here. Look for those receivers yeah. to cross. The Townsend 101 Fake, out here, too. Fakes the pass. Going deep again. Oh, and it was almost complete there. Nemeth had his hands on the ball, and it just kind of went through. Got no flags on the play, it doesn't look like, so that will bring up a turnover on downs for the Hansworth Royals. Hansworth yeah. will take over on downs, first down 10 yards to go on the 32-yard line. Jay, what did you see on that play? 
Boy, I get Carson Graham just coming back to the very same play and Hansworth playing with only one free safety and Cohen Ames, the, the middle safety, got all the way over <coughs> there just to break up that play at the last minute. That would have been another touchdown for the Carson Graham Eagles. Just an outstanding play by number five, Cohen Ames, to break up that pass play. Let's see if, Car if Hansworth can take advantage of this turnover on downs. Brimman back in the shotgun, ready to take the snap. <coughs> a quick toss to Kanuka. Kanuka over the right side for about three and a half yards, met by a group of Carson Graham Eagles, led by McIntosh and Samuels on the tackle. We've got second down, eight yards to go. Ball on the 33, 34 yard line. And yeah. we've got somebody down on the field. We've yeah. got a, a big bit of a bang up for Jones Nahimi is just looks like he's shaking up. It looks like they're looking at his hand. Yeah, it looks like, again, you know, I talked to a couple of coaches and some of the players throughout the week, and we did have some, you know, some injuries last week. Um, Carson Graham opened the season. They call it week zero. They played against the W.J. Mowat Hawks out in Abbotsford. They defeated uh, the Hawks. I believe it was 14-13, but in that game, a few of the uh, Eagles got shaken up. Liam Marshall, I know, hurt his uh, hurt his leg a little bit. Hansworth, of course, we talked about the fact that they played against Argyle and uh, had a couple of injuries. It's tough early in the season, Mike. You you know, no matter how much you train, it's tough to get back. And when you play a real a first game and it's physical, like senior football is. Sometimes it's hard to avoid some of those minor injuries. Well, Jones Nahim ran off on his own power. He, he's a senior this year, so let's hope he gets back for his senior season and has a great one. Brimman back looking over the line in the shotgun. He's got two backs in the backfield for the first time all day. We've got Mo Yoshima and Mohushin coming down this way. Bring him looking that way, gets flushed out of the pocket. Left-hander throwing across his body. Oh, and just couldn't be squeezed by Malcolm. That'll bring up third down and about eight yards to go. That was a pretty good pass. Jay had a lot on the mustard. You can see the arm talent on Brynham. Yeah, absolutely. As we talked about, the number one left-handed pitcher in ranked in all of Canada. And he, like you said, Mike, he really did drill that ball, even though he was going to his right-hand side and kind of, uh, you know, sometimes a difficult throw for a left-handed quarterback, but he certainly did have a lot of velocity on that football. Would have been a tough catch, but uh, nonetheless, Hansworth comes up with a third and seven. Another big play. We keep on talking about these Hansworth drives. They've just got to get something going in this first half, Mike. Yes, they need to score eventually. Here we go. Bring them back in the shotgun once again. I think that we'll see that all day. Looks like number nine in motion. We're looking that way. Bring them rolling that way. Throws it over the middle, completion. First down to Yoshima. That's a gain of about 18 yards on the completion from Brim to Yoshima. First down for the Hansworth Royals, just over the Carson Graham, into the Carson Graham territory. Big first down for the car, for, for the Hansworth Royals there. Shane doing a nice job of rolling out to his left-hand side. Carson, or Hansworth, coming out with a trips formation, taking the inside receiver, the slot back, and blocking down on number five, Braylon. And that was the key to that play, is that Shane was able to get to the outside and have a little bit more time to deliver that pass and put that pass right on the money. Again, a big play from the Hansworth Royals. Let's see if they can sustain this, sustain this drive, Mike, with just under nine minutes left in the uh, second quarter. Remember, the Hansworth Royals will re be receiving the second half kickoff. That would be good. And uh, they also really want to keep the Carson defense on the field for a little while here to sustain this drive. We've got first down 10 yards to go on the 49-yard line. Brennan back in the gun. Quick toss. Quick toss to Kanuda. Kanuda is stopped for pretty much no gain there. Once again on the tackle, number nine and number 20. Number 20 has been on a lot of plays. Day Dalen Lewis has been making a lot of plays from his linebacker position. He really has, and Carson's, you know, Poya does a nice job from a defensive coordinated position. He tells those defensive ends that on that tight trips formation, Mike, they're going to see a lot of toss. They're going to see a lot of rollouts. So he tells his defensive ends to widen and make sure everything goes inside to those middle linebackers, which is exactly what happened on that particular play. Little confusion breaking the huddle here. Brenham's trying to get everybody organized here. Here we go. Plays in now. Everybody, everybody seems to be in the right position. Up on the line, yeah. Yeah, now we've got to oh. probably hurry up with this. There we go. Everybody's set in the right position now. A little motion. Brenham looking to his right. Oh, under throws a little bit, and that ball hit the ground. That is an incomplete pass. 
So that is incomplete. That'll bring up third down and 11 yards to go, no matter how much they protest. We've also got a flag on the backfield. Could be holding where that flag's been dropped, Jay. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a call. If it is a holding call, of course, Carson Graham would, uh, well, good. it's interesting. They've got to make a decision here, right? Do you take that penalty or yeah. do you decline it? Let's see if uh, what Coach Brady would do in this situation. I would probably decline the, the third. decline, but let's see what happens. Yeah, right. the option is third and 11 or second and 21. And he's flipped the down markers. It looks like they're accepting the penalty. This is interesting. We haven't, yep. They are accepting the penalty, so that'll bring up second down and 21 yards to go. One of the things when you do accept that penalty, you think you might be able to generate a turnover, don't you, Jay? Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's what the defense is always going to be thinking in this situation. And, uh, again, Hansworth is certainly in a passing situation. And, you know, maybe Hansworth could, you know, kind of nullify, nullify that rush with maybe a little bit of screen. Let's look for a quick pass or a quick screen to one of the wide receivers or one of the tailbacks. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet. So here we go. We've got... We've got second down, 21 yards to go. Fake the handoff. Throws it over the middle, and oh, it's just right through. That was a potential interception for McCooler. Just slipped through his hands. That'll bring up third down, 21 yards to go. We were talking in the first quarter about how Carson would have to come up with a third and 33, so Hansworth now has a third and 21. Maybe they can get the results that Carson did on that play. Exactly, and that just shows the versatility of the outside linebacker defensive end from Braylon, number five. We talked about the fact that he's often rushing the passer, but that time he dropped back in pass situations. So also a receiver, a fine athlete. Braylon has got a bright, bright future in football, Mike. Yeah, and here's here we go. We've got Kanuka flanking, bring him in the backfield, fake to Kanuka. And McCooler put the pressure on, as you said. That's an 11-yard gain, just 10 yards short of the first down, but a good completion to Ames there on third down and long. So now we've got, or second and long, third and long. Now we've got fourth down and nine yards to go. And it looks like Hansworth's bringing in their punt team. Yeah, again, you know, that just shows you that penalties are just going to really affect your drives. Hansworth had a little bit of a drive going there, Mike, and they just were not able to sustain it when they had that holding penalty and took him back to, you know, second and 20. And again, it's a very, very hard, uh, you know, position for your offense to be in when you're at, in a second and 20 position like that. Looks like Hansworth's trying to get their... Yeah, it looks like their punter was not on the field. Yeah, Yoshima be, was uh, be a good not idea back if the, in. <laughs> <laughs> good idea if the punter yes, was that on could the field. Yes, could have been tough. I thought they might be faking it to an up back without a punter, but no. Here's Yoshima here. Carson Graham Carson not has return nobody there, returning, yeah. oh. and we've got a flag on the field. Maybe timeout Carson. Or no, no they dropped a flag, yeah, and we've got... Procedure, which is interesting. Against... Yeah, against they're going to call it on a punt team, yeah. Yeah, they, they're going to back it up. Back it up five yards. Maybe Carson will put somebody into the uh, into receive this time. Oh, there goes Braylon. Yeah, especially with so many dangerous weapons on offense. Hey, Mike. I mean, why wouldn't you put somebody? Yeah, back you would there think too? you'd be able to return a punt. So yeah, McCooler's back to re receive it now. The big defensive end slash linebacker. Yoshima gets the ball snapped to him. Left foots it oh. out of there. Pretty good kick down. It hits the ground. McCooler just leaves it. Gets away from it. Rolling, 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 and they stop it at the 11-yard line. Carson will take over first and 10 with six minutes and 15 seconds left in the second quarter. Carson Graham leading 20 to nothing. And once again, we'd like to thank our title sponsors, the Ani Group, the, our other sponsors, the Donahoe Realty Group, Blair Photos, North Shore Law, Upper Levels Plumbing, Western Campus Resources, Team Nike, Venue Kings, Coast Performance and Rehabilitation, and our community partners, Delaney's Coffee, Nestle's Food, the city of North Vancouver, and of course, the parents from both Carson Graham and Hansworth. So Jay, one of the things that we're seeing is with the quarterbacks in the NFL and with Brindham here is the arm talent is a key. So let's see what Marshall can do here on first and 10. He's got quite a strong arm as well. Here we go, the snap is back, fake the hand. Oh, the handoff was given. And it, a nice gain by Jonathan Tugan the left-hand side. That gets you off out of the shadow of your goalposts. 
So right now, Carson Graham, you know, Brian Brady, again, is starting to take a look at that clock right now and is trying to manage the clock a little bit. And yeah, certainly he would be happy to score quickly, but uh, would be happy just to take a lot of time off the clock right now. And Marshall throws it out quickly to uh, Isaac. Isaac with a reception and a gets his first down yardage. That's a big first down for Carson moving out of their goal line. It is a big first down, and Brian Brady kind of changed the play right from there. You heard him yell a signal out to the players and uh, saw that curl rut was open, and it was a good completion by Liam Marshall. Here we go. Carson's up again on the line. Marshall's back, looks over the middle. Oh, and a nice catch right there by Nemeth for a first down yardage. So that takes them all the way out to the 42-yard line. In just three quick plays, they've moved all the way out to the 42 from their own 10. And that's exactly what the Carson Graham Eagles offense is all about. Very explosive, one of the most explosive offenses in all of British Columbia high school football. Just so much fun to watch. And Nichols is back in the backfield, and they fake it to Nichols. Marshall looking deep again to number three. A long pass to Taos, and it's complete. He had people draped all over him. For a first down to Eric Town, we've got a penalty flag on the play as well. That's all the way down to the 20-yard line. Let's see what the call is here. It was a late flag. It might be pass interference, which I'm sure they'll decline. Yeah, it looks like it's going to They've got the veteran Michael Westman, of course, our back judge, who is uh, making this, going to have a little huddle here with the experienced ref. Again, the head referee today, Tori Davis. Gives us a chance to talk a little bit about, uh, again, minor football. Those of you in, on the North Shore, the GSL Football League. Oh, there's your call, Mike. You were absolutely right. Pass interference. Declined. Yeah, the call, of course, declined. GSL, the GSL Football League. Folks, join the GSL Football League. GSL.com, uh, grade 8 and below. It's a great organization. David Pohl, the president, uh, would love to have you down in Norgate Park playing football. Here we go. First down, 10 yards to go on the 20-yard line for the Carson Graham Eagles. Marshall looking out, throws it to McCooler, and just out of his outstretched arms would have been a touchdown if they could have connected. Boy, I tell you, when you have a guy like Braylon who's at 6'5", almost 6'6", who's also a great basketball player, why not throw the ball up to him? And uh, you're certainly always going to get a mismatch with him running that corner out just a little bit outside of uh, reach for Braylon. He looks a little winded. He's is going no, both ways going here. Absolutely. Here I'm go. winded first watching him. <laughs> first down 10 yards to go. Throwing to the other side to Nemeth this time. Touchdown. That's the hat trick for Finn Neatham. Nemeth. Well, that's the guy you got to stop. There you go. Right, let's see how many. I wonder how many touchdowns Aiden got today for the McMaster uh, Marauders. Let's see if he can match his brother with all those touchdowns from uh, the younger Namath brother. But again, great job, Finn. And hey, outstanding throw again from Liam Marshall. Two point convert. I would not be happy if I was the kicker for Carson Graham. <laughs> That's, it seems like a bit of a day off for him, but <laughs> Nemeth's in an empty backfield this time. So the last two point conversion, they handed it off. They don't have that option this time. Marshall's going to do a little bit of a quarterback draw, leans forward, reaches. And we're waiting for a signal. They're looking and say, the officials say he did not get over. And as you know, in high school football, we do not have an instant replay. We cannot review that call. <laughs> so it stands 26-0 with 4.46 left in the second quarter for your Car Carson Graham Eagles leading the Hansworth Royals. Well, I tell you, Mike, I know that... Uh Brian Brady would be happy with the fact that they're up 26 nothing, but I don't think he's going to be happy with his two-point convert situation. I believe they've only converted one. Yeah, they're one for four on two-point conversions. They've tried to run it twice, throw it twice. They converted the run, one of the runs, and that time the quarterback draw just ended up inches short. And, uh, hey, a positive for the Hansworth Royals, though. The JV, uh, boy, I was at that junior varsity game, Mike. We were here watching that game. They jumped up to a 49-6 to halftime lead, and they cruised to a 56-14 victory over uh, the Carson Graham Eagles in the doubleheader that started at uh, 1030 here at Confederation Park. Congratulations, Ryan Jensen, head coach and ex-quarterback from the Hansworth Royals that I had a chance to coach, and Darren Benning was the defensive coordinator. Uh, congratulations again to the Ju uh, Clayton Lee, the quarterback for the Hansworth Royals, a young man that I've had a chance to work with. But boy, the Hansworth Royals JV Junior Varsity team sure had an outstanding performance again, defeating the Carson Graham Eagles 56-14 to this morning. Well, Jay, you were just mentioning that you've coached 
several quarterbacks. Do you still run those camps? Still run the camps, Mike. 30 consecutive years this year, so I'm excited. I, You know what? I still get excited about the camps. and Nanaimo, Victoria, all across BC. Got to Calgary, Edmonton, Lethbridge this year. Did a camp in Salmon Arm up to Comox. Love it. Love every minute of it. Jay Prepchuk, quarterbackcamps.com. Here we go. Nichols kicks it deep. Kamuka doesn't field it out through the end zone, so Hansworth will take over first down, 10 yards to go on their own 20-yard line. Well, we keep on saying it, Mike, but I tell you, you know, the Hansworth Royals just really got to get something going, and they certainly, you know, look a little dejected. And as you said, at kickoff, it was 26 degrees is the temperature, but down on that field, it's a lot hotter than that, and they have a lot of their players going both ways, especially the skilled guys, right? Uh, Yushima... Uh, Ames, Portal, those guys are all going both ways, and it's really tough when you're playing on turf and you're running as much as you are, especially when you're trying to defend that Carson Graham passing attack. Boy, I tell you, that really takes its toll on them. So let's see if that is a factor as this ball game progresses. And the dark uniforms, as you know, just hold the heat in a little bit more. So here we go. We've got first down, 10 yards to go. Brimman in the backfield with Kanuka, and now we're ready to go here. Got some motion, a toss to Kanuka. Kanuka comes over the side. He's got a little bit of an opening. Gaines steps out with about one yard. So he's nine yards, one yard short of the first down. He was forced out of play by Lipinski. Yeah, nice job. A nice run there on first down for uh, the Hansworth Royals picking up nine yards. And again, you know, Coach Benning is... Uh, it's important to know that they're going to receive the second half kickoff. So that if they can kind of sustain a drive here, get a get a touchdown on the board, come back in the second half and take that uh, second half kickoff, then they can be in this football game. Okay, we've got second down, one yard to go. We've got Kanuka and Brainham in the backfield. Brainham taking the snap. Tight formation to the top side of your screen. Solar receiver down on the bottom. Fakes the toss, and then an inside counter, and it's swallowed up in the backfield. The Carson Graham met at the fullback. Barber with the initial hit and drew, bring him down. That'll bring up a third down and about five yards to go, Jay. Yeah, boy. Oh, that's no, they did. They marked it a little bit closer. It is only, only a long two, Jay. Yeah, they gave Hansworth a little bit of a break there, I think, didn't they, Mike? I they, think it was yeah, a favorable yeah. spot, but that's okay. Maybe okay. just forward progress or yeah. uh, anyways it does bring up a third and two situation for the hands with rolls uh let's see if we can get the ball into uh you know our main receiver or the hands with main receiver august portal maybe hitting try to hit him on a slant play or maybe a quick curl route yeah they are r rotating their receivers a little bit yoshima up in, in motion in the upper part of the field brim looking that way throws underneath mm -hmm. and just out of the reach of ames so that'll bring up a fourth down and about a yard, and it looks like Hansworth is not going to risk it in their own side of the field, and they're going to kick it away. Yeah, one exciting thing that uh, we should mention, of course, kind of the king of this whole program uh, is um, uh, Larry Donahoe. Congratulations, first of all, Larry is going to be inducted into the uh, British Columbia Football Hall of Fame next week, and uh, that's exciting time for Larry. Coaching for over 40 years, of course, was a great receiver for the Carson Graham Eagles down with the Steve Martin and uh, uh, Glenn Suter era back in the late 70s but uh, again Larry congratulations on another great uh, Buchanan Bowl setup. Yoshima kicked that and tried to angle it out of bounds and only got about 15 yards on the kick. Let's see where they mark it. They mark it yeah 13 yard kick. It's first down 10 yards to go for your Carson Graham Eagles on the Hansworth 40 yard line. 3 minutes and 46 seconds left. Hansworth has not been able to stop Carson at all. They've scored on every drive so far. With this quick formation, Hansworth hasn't had an answer yet. Marshall has orchestrated this beautifully. He's got Nickel in the backfield with him. Here we go. First down, 10 yards to go. Marshall looking over the defense. The snap comes back to him. Nickel's in motion. McCooler over the center, over the middle, just pounds away. He's a tough man to bring down. It took two Royals dragging him down as he dragged him down the field. That's a tough, that was a tough ass for Caddick and Ames to bring him down. That's a gain of almost 25 yards. Bad news for everybody around British Columbia football. He's only in grade 11, Mike. Oh, my <laughs> God. He will be a handful for the next year and a half. First down, 10 yards to go. And once again, straight back to McCooler. 
Cooler moving. Oh, he is such a load to bring down. The same two players tried to drag him down again. Caddick and Ames have their hands full with that guy. And you know that Brian Brady, if he runs a play and it's successful, he's going to keep running that football player. So kind of a message out there to young coaches, don't get too fancy. If you run a play, it works. Keep running it until the defense stops you. So McCooler's lined up down on the left-hand side of the formation this time. McNichol Nickel up on the right-hand side. Nemeth in motion down towards us. Fires quick for a quick receiver screen there. Pounds it forward for the touchdown. Number 17 scored that one. Moldenhauer got the touchdown, bringing the score 32 to nothing with two minutes and 43 seconds left in the first half. Boy, again, just your little quick screen out there. Brian Brady calling the plays, kind of the old Oregon uh, offense there on the fly. Nassau, just fast, fast, fast. So difficult for the Hansworth Royals to defend that. So difficult for the Hansworth Royals to change their defense up and to call uh, uh, a, you know, a different defense, Mike. And uh, again, hitting that quick screen is exactly uh, the play that Brian Brady loves to run whenever uh, he gets a chance, especially down in the red zone. So we had a personal foul penalty on that play as well. So that'll br bring the uh, conversion back about 15 yards. So it'll be a 17 yard attempt here. Maybe the breathing room will give them a little more options in our offense to call this two point conversion play. Yeah, still looking for a kicker to maybe come out here. And because we saw the kickoffs by Kai Nickel today that were yeah. extremely deep and extremely high, right? It certainly has the leg to uh, get that ball um, through the goalpost from this situation. Not going to happen here, Jay. They're in the, they're running a play, throwing it deep to McCooler. McCooler over the shoulder. Oh, juggles it and holds on for the two point conversion. My goodness, between McCooler and Nemeth, they certainly have options on the outside for receivers. Maybe they should just put their convert from the 25-yard uh, line all the time and go for it. A wheel route inside. Braylon lines up from the inside slot position. Just runs the out and up, and Liam Marshall once again puts that ball on the money. So, again, boy, I tell you, this is a tough half for the Hansworth Royals, but... Uh, Hey, looking at these, Mike, we're looking at the list of scholarship winners from 1990. Boy, we have Sandy Turner, quarterback for the Hansworth Royals, won 1990, the first official Buchanan Bowl scholarship uh, winner. I hope Sandy Turner put that scholarship to good use. And uh, certainly looking down the list of all these great players, Noah Brinham, again, yes, that is Shane, the quarterback's brother, won the, won the award last year. Noah this year is playing for the Langley Rams, dynamic player, a, he also uh, was on Team BC last year. You might have seen uh, one of the great touchdowns that he scored in Team BC in Kelowna last year. Griffin Withers, outstanding receiver for the Carson Graham Eagles last year, uh, was also a scholarship winner. Uh, we see Aiden Namath, uh, 2021, Emmett Otheus. So just a list of some uh, great uh, great people, great players. I see a lot of guys that, uh, of course, I coached and uh Scholarship. So again, it's great to uh, see players recognized for their efforts in this football game. And Nichols kicks it deep again and through the end zone and Hansworth will take over first down and 10 yards to go on their own 20 yard line with two minutes and 43 seconds left. I'm sure that Hansworth would like to milk a clock and get a touchdown here so as not to give the ball back to the potent Carson offense. Yeah, I believe they still have two, two timeouts, timeouts left. Yeah, they used a timeout earlier in the ball game. So... Uh, you know they've run their um, they've run their uh, two minute offense in practice almost every day. So let's see if they can march down the field and get a score again. Try to get something positive out of this half. They are going to be receiving the second half kickoff um, as we do start the second half coming up. And one of the unique things about football is that each quarterback has his favorite ball. So we just saw. Brenham's ball being run in for him here. Yeah, Bodden Football is a sponsor of high school football. Thank you, Bodden Footballs, for uh, uh, being such a great support and a great sponsor. Here we go. The snaps back to Brim. Brim tosses to Kanuka. Kanuka running around to his right and just gets brought down in the backfield for no gain. Once again, the cornerback with a good force on that play. McIntosh came up and made the play. 
Boy, just more looks like more of a confidence thing right now. That Carson Graham defense is uh, firing on all cylinders right now, and they are prepared. They know that Hansworth, when they run that uh, trips formation, the main play that Hansworth Rhodes are going to run is that toss into uh, the trips formation. They've kind of been able to snuff that play out. And that's the thing about that play, Mike, is, you know, if you have a corner or defensive end that start to read that play, then oftentimes there's going to be a loss on that play, and that's certainly what's happened uh, in this situation. Looks like a timeout on the field and gives us a chance to run down some of our um, points that we want to talk about a little bit today, Mike. Yeah, they, one of the things that we noticed with Brenham is him being a baseball player. It's a bit of a trend that really good pitchers and baseball players shortstops are becoming quarterbacks. As we know, Pat Mahomes has a background in that. So does Russell Wilson. Do you really think it helps, Jay, with arm talent? You know what, I just think that, uh, you know, those guys that you mentioned, of course, are one of a kind, right? They are such tremendous athletes that, uh, you know, they can, uh, you know, they can make so many different throws. And we, of course, see Patrick Mahomes and, you know, at my camps, a lot of the quarterbacks will hear me say this, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes kind of drives me nuts, right? Because we try not to teach that uh, sidearm delivery, right? Even though, you know, quarterbacks really do need to, you know, make that, uh, make that kind of throw right once in a while when they have a defensive end in their face so definitely it is uh you know throws that uh those guys can make and it's very difficult for you know other kind of i'm going to say normal athletes to make true and at your camps you stress the fundamentals before you move on to all these funky throws i'm sure <laughs> absolutely okay first second down and about 14 yards to go for the royals Brigham fumbles the snap. It was a low snap again. I think he fell on it to recover, but that'll bring up a third down and long once again for the Royals with a minute and 50 seconds left in the quarter. They really do not want to give the ball back to Carson. They really don't, Mike. And, uh, hey, lots of football going on this weekend. There was some, uh, I was at the St. Thomas More Notre Dame game last night. Boy, that was a tough, that was a battle. Went into overtime. St. Thomas More, congratulations, uh, to the St. Thomas More Knights for a big victory last night over the Notre Dame Jugglers. Tough, uh, hard-fought football game. And uh, UBC is hosting Calgary right now as we speak. If anybody's got a score out there, they can send a message to me. Let us know what uh, that UBC Calgary score is right now. Okay, interesting. Carson didn't take his time out there. The clock is still running. A minute, 15 seconds left. Brynham over the ball. Now we've got a whistle. Before we were able to snap the ball, the clock has stopped with a minute and 10 seconds left. Just a little tap on the center's head there to give him some confidence, I guess, from the referee. Here we go. Brynham ready for the snap. Fields it. Rolls out to his left. He's a left-hander. Looking downfield. Throws incomplete. Just in kind of over one and short of the other. We've got 56 seconds left. Fourth down. I think we'll see Hansworth punt team coming out. Yeah, that's exactly what... Uh Darren Benning will certainly do in this situation. Boy, you know, again, Shane rolling out to his left-hand side, kind of flooding the area. Uh, wide receiver running a streak, inside receiver running a breakout, backside tight end coming across the field. And again, Shane just on a bit of an overthrow there, a tough situation. Karsten Graham, uh, credit to, again, Poya and his defense today. They have come prepared to play this football game and uh, – have you know certainly showed on the scoreboard as they have shut out the um, they have shut out the hands with rolls thus far. And here we go. We've got the kicking ball in now. So Yoshima back to punt in his own end zone. He'll need a good one here, and then Hansworth really needs to buckle down to stop Carson. There, Carson's had five drives, five touchdowns. Oh, a low snap. He got Yoshima got it out, angling it towards the sideline and it drops out of bounds at the 32 yard line 54.7 seconds left Carson Graham will take over first and 10 on the 32 yard line going in for another touchdown yeah just one more break for the Carson Graham Eagles there as that punt hit the ground and uh, kind of bounced back towards the Hansworth Royal end zone I think Carson Graham picked up another six yards on that particular play but uh, again look for hey 54 seconds is a lot of time for uh, Liam Marshall and this Carson Graham offense. Yeah, for, with only 32 yards to go, they went they went 90 yards in a minute and 15 seconds earlier in the, in the game. So th they do have lots of time to strike here, Jay. We've got an official timeout on the field. Looks like 76 was taken off for equipment issue, and here comes 
Here comes Huntfield to Huntford to replace him. Yeah, a big chance for Huntford at right tackle position. Let's see if he can hold off that defensive end from the hands with rolls on this pass play. Here we go. This snaps up. Marshall looking downfield. Flushed out to his right. Oh, just throws it away. He's outside the tackle box. The pass went past the line of scrimmage, so there'll be no intentional grounding on that play. That'll bring up second down, 10 yards to go with 40, almost 46 seconds left. It's confusing when it goes to the 10th of a second, don't you think, Jay? I know, <laughs> absolutely, but they tried to get the, um, they tried to swing the tailback out there and try to get him on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation for the Carson Graham Eagles, but Hansworth did a good job of staying back in their zone defense and defending that play. Yeah, they've got Tugan in the scat back as opposed to Nickel in the backfield here. Quick hitch to mm -hmm. Nemeth, and it is incomplete. Good coverage by Yushima on the play, bringing up third down and 10 yards to go. This is a big, big play for the Hansworth defense in terms of confidence. We do have a Royal down on the field. Looks like a little tweak of the knee. We'll have the trainer coming in to take a look at it. And Yushima there did a nice oh. job of reading that... Uh, what do we have, Mike? It might be a bit of a cramp, Jay. Does yeah. that look like a cramp? Yeah, it absolutely looks yeah. like a cramp. looks so. like a cramp to me, too. He'll be able, he looks like he's able to work it out a little bit, but we do need to make sure these athletes do remain hydrated. Yeah, Yushima did a nice job of reading that quick screen and actually saw some of the highlights. Cole Shanks from the uh, Mowat Hawks last week, I believe, picked off a uh, quick screen and ran it in for a touchdown for uh, the Mowat Hawks last week against the Carson Graham Eagles. So... Um, Again, tough division. Boy, this AAA West division, the Hansworth Royals coming up next week against uh, the Kelowna Owls. Uh, they're hosting Kelowna. Then at South Delta, hosting New West at, Nor at Notre Dame, at VC, Belmont Bulldogs visiting the Royals, and then out at Mount Doug to finish off the season for the Royals. Here we go. We've got trips to the right. Marshall over the ball. Hands off to Kanuka on third down and long, and he is stopped short of the first down, about seven yards to go. A good tackle on the play by Povey again. So Povey makes another tackle. It looks like they decided to run that play with the idea of going for it on fourth down, Jay. Yeah, absolutely, and just taking a... Uh taking, I believe, their first time out. That's uh, correct, the first time out of the yeah. half for the Carson Graham Eagles. Kind of an interesting call for Brian Brady. You think he's going to be passing on third and long, but it, like you said, Mike, I think he's in, you know, kind of two down uh, territory there, so he's not in any rush to, you know, be picking up the first down. Kind of thought maybe he would catch the hands with Rolls off guard a little bit and, uh, and have a running play. Picked up five yards, good gain, but uh, again, on fourth and five, let's see... Uh, what Coach Brady has up his sleeve. And let's see what uh, Coach Benning has, if he's going to play in kind of a blitz uh, posture. Is he going to blitz the um, Carson Graham Eagles here? Is he going to sit back? Is he going to play zone? Always a chess match that uh, we will find out in a few seconds here, Mike, what uh, is going to happen with the Hansworth defense. Yeah, and fourth and five, it opens up the whole playbook. There's a lot of options for both coaches on this play. So we've got the scat back Tugan in the backfield flanking Marshall. Marshall overlooking the whole field. He's got trips to the high side of the field, fakes to Coogan, throws it deep, and it's knocked oh. away. There you go, there's the first defensive stop for the Hansworth Royals. Well defended by Portal there on the play. The pass was intended to town. That'll be first down 10 yards to go for the Royals with 27 seconds left on their own 28 yard line. Now, Jay, do you think they'll be aggressive here or just take a knee and say, let's just go to the second half? Yeah, I would believe that they're going to just go into the second half. But as you said, Mike, a nice play by uh, uh, August Portal. Again, that fine two-way player, wide receiver for the hands with Rose, one of the main targets for Shane Brenham and also plays his cornerback position, had outstanding coverage, did a nice job of just knocking that ball away with his right hand. Did a nice job of not you know, grabbing or not touching the receiver with his left hand and uh, Michael Westman, of course, the experienced back judge, was right there to uh, to see the uh, to have a no call on that situation. Nice job, nice defense, yeah, nice defensive play by August. It's nice to see a defender locate the football like that and knock it away. So we, here we have Bremen over the ball. He's in the shotgun. We've got motion. Looks like they're going to run a play here, Jay. Yeah, he, Bremen drops back to pass, throws the out, little out route, and that'll be incomplete. The attempt by Ames to catch the ball. It was a hair behind him. 
It looked like he was going for a bit of a back shoulder throw there, Jay. Yeah, exactly. A back shoulder fade. You got that exactly right there, Mike. It's a tough to. F it's a good play to call in this situation where the Carson Graham Eagles are going to, you know, play a kind of a cover four look where they're going to play very, very deep. Number two, the cornerback, of course, is uh, not going to let anything get past him. Uh, August runs that kind of looks like a fade, looks like a streak, and then just at the last minute kind of drops out at about the 15-yard mark. And uh, very, very difficult play to time up, especially early in the season. So they're, the Hansworth Royals are being very aggressive on their own 28-yard line with 22 seconds left. Brim back in the shotgun. There we go. He's, ah, they're running the ball here. That's uh, Kanuka just kind of going down easily. Looks like that'll be the last play of the first half. Uh, let's see, the clock has been stopped here. And a timeout has been called by the Carson Graham Eagles. An interesting yeah. timeout there, yeah. with third and long coming up with 14 seconds left. That leaves Carson with one timeout. Right. And Hansworth with third and almost 20 yards to go, Jay. Yeah, I think it's a smart move by Brian Brady to call this because he knows that Hansworth is probably going to, uh, if they run, they've got the, you're right, they've got the one timeout left, right? Force Hansworth, so if Hansworth runs the ball or tries to down it here, they can call timeout again and would force Hansworth to run one more play. Yeah. So the score is 34 for Carson, zero for Hansworth. And we're looking at third and very long again. Brim back in the shotgun. We've got a tight formation with Portal flanked out to the right-hand side of the formation. We've got motion coming this way with Ames. And it looks like a cornerback blitz coming in. McIntosh did get to the quarterback right away. That was the cornerback blitz. Let's see if Carson calls his their third and final timeout on the play with seven and a half seconds left in the quarter. And yes, Carson Graham did call their final timeout of the quarter. Yeah, good eyes, Mike. We had that great angle to see that yeah. cornerback blitzing. Interesting to call a quarter or a corner blitz on that particular play. We haven't seen that from Coach Poya yet today. But uh, again, bringing the heat, still wanting to play physical at this time, and you know, causing Hansworth to have to punt the ball away. Boy, I think if you know Carson Graham in this situation, I would just rush eleven guys here and. Uh, See if we can try to block that punt. If Certainly if he blocked the punt, it, the ball would roll into the hands with end zone for a safety or even a touchdown for the Carson Graham Eagles. So they're going to try to block this kick. I would think so. And Yoshima will be standing in his own end zone when he fields the snap for this ball. That puts a lot of pressure on the center. Long snapping is quite an art. I I know a, fr a good friend of ours was a great long snapper, Jamie Buse, who's played for the Lions for many years. Yeah, it's such a great athlete. was a great basketball player. That certainly helped that he uh, could master that skill for the Lions for so many years. So here we go. They're putting pressure on it. They're oh, coming oh. for it. Oh, they almost, McCooler almost got it. The wind seemed to take that and blow it all the way down. We've got 1.6 seconds left, and Carson will take over the ball in the 26-yard line. I got to imagine with the timeouts being called, the thought was to take a shot in the end zone if you got the chance, and they have the chance, Jay. Oh, absolutely. Geez, Braylon almost blocked that. That would have been like a, a hat trick for him, a football hat trick, a touchdown. A, well, he was close to an interception, but certainly has a sack tonight as well. So yeah, uh, let's look for Liam Marshall to run one of his favorite long yardage plays, just that wheel route, those inside receivers running the out and up play and uh, see if Liam can put that ball to the outside. Hansworth certainly is going to be in there. Cover three, cover four, where they're going to back up a little bit here. But oh, they're playing press. In interesting here. Nemeth is not on the field here. Here we go. First down, 10 yards to go, but really one play left in the half. And we've got McCooler on a, on a wheel route, catches it, and oh, he just dropped it at the pylon. A very well-delivered ball from Marshall to McCooler, and it was very close to a touchdown. That brings the first half to an end with Carson Graham leading 34 to nothing over your Hansworth Royals. Before we take our halftime break, I just wanted to thank the sponsors of the game, the Omni Group, the Donahoe Realty Group, Blair Photos, North Shore Law, Upper Levels Plumbing, Western Campus Resources, Team Nike, Venue Kings, Coast Performance and Rehabilitation, and our community partners, Delaney's Coffee, Nestle's Food, the City of North Vancouver, Carson Graham and Hansworth Royals Football Parents Group. 
Jay, do you have any thoughts before we take a break for halftime? Boy, I tell you, that's a, just a tough first half for the Hansworth Royals, and uh, they're going to sit back and try to regroup. Coaches have got a difficult uh, task ahead of them, certainly, but let's see if they can receive the second half kickoff and uh, get some momentum in the second half. Excellent, and we'll see you guys in about 10 minutes. Take care, and we'll be back.
Welcome back to Confederation Park. Here we are with the second half beginning. Hansworth will take over the ball. I'm Mike McSorley broadcasting here with my color man and good friend Jay Prepchuk. The score is 34 to nothing for the Carson Graham Eagles over the Hansworth Royals. Hansworth Royals will be on your right hand side in their dark blues and Carson on the left hand side in their bright reds. Nickel will be kicking off the ball to to Kanuka and Yoshima are back to receive. The first half was dominated by the Carson Graham Eagles, Jay. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they just showed their explosiveness on offense. Liam Marshall was uh, just firing away in all cylinders and hitting his great receivers and Towns and Braylon and Namath. And uh, you know what? It's just that's Carson Graham football, right? Just so, so difficult to defend. But, uh, boy, we really were witness to the explosiveness of the Carson Graham Eagles. Let's see if the Hansworth Royals can uh, show their pride and come back in the second half and uh, receiving the second half kickoff. Let's start off with a good return for the Royals. Here we go. Nickel ready to kick it. Right foots it down. And number 11 receives the ball on the right hand hash. He's moving his way to his left hand side and is brought down on the 23 yard line. 23-yard line. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> what a challenge for you. Yeah, the down, you the down markers are, are disappearing on us a little bit on this side. <laughs> we got a 30, we got a 40, we know center field, but we yeah. don't have a 20, we don't have a 10. Yeah. We know the, the goal lines. <laughs> yeah, we can see the pylons, which helps. So it's first down, 10 yards to go for Carson, for Hansworth Royals. Brimman had a pretty good first half, but just couldn't sustain the drives. He did, yeah. A couple of drops and just a couple of miscues here and there. Uh, again, you know, credit to the uh, Carson Graham defense for being well prepared against this Hansworth offense. Yeah, and a couple of exchanges from centers that were a little tough. Exactly, a yeah, little those were tough. plays. Kanuka in the backfield behind him. Brynham takes the snap, throws over the left-hand side, and just threw the ball through the arms of Ames. A pretty good pass, but well covered by Shea was on the coverage there good coverage we have a do have a flag on the field in the backfield that's quite often offensive holding let's see what the call is here we'll wait for the officials to make the call we've got a personal foul against the uh hands were throws i didn't see the personal foul jay did you no tough to tough to see that mike like you said usually a flag in that situation is a holding call against the offense but certainly uh personal foul is not the way to start the second half for the Hansworth Royals and uh, boy this is really going to back them up if Carson Graham elects to take this uh, penalty. Yeah will it I think because it's a 15 yarder it'll only be half the distance so let's see what happens here. No they're marching them all back the full 15 yards. No. I guess halfway to the goal line maybe Mike. Yeah or? it looks like half the distance so now it's second and First and 20. Oh, right, and they're going to... Oh, we don't know if it's first or... <laughs> I, I think it's probably second and 20 because it might have been a dead ball exactly. foul. There we go. Yeah. That's what we talked about in the first half. Brim back to pass, rolling out to his left. It's left-handed, so that's his easy way to throw it. Flicks it just a little check down to Canuda and gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe gains a yard. That'll bring up third down and 10 yards to go. So and that was a 10-yard gain there. That's a yeah. good play on second down, Jay. Absolutely. A good call by Darren Benning to get Shane uh, Brenham out of the pocket. As we talked about earlier, Hansworth Royals starting four grade 11s on their offensive line. Boy, that's a, you know, that's a tough position to play, especially when uh, you've got a very, very physical blitzing defense from the Carson Graham Eagles. Yeah, it's a building year for Hansworth as it's their first year up in this division. Brim back in the backfield with Kadu, Kaduka. Gets the snap, a little floater to him, rolling to his right, plants his foot, throws to Kaduka, and he's well covered on the play by Lewis. That'll bring up fourth down for the Royals. That was a quick three and out for the uh, Hansworth Royals. Yeah, boy, just 59 seconds in that particular drive. And uh, again, same play run to the right-hand side. Hansworth Royals just kind of trying to flood the zone, taking the... Uh, Wide receiver running him on a streak route. Inside receiver on a breakout and trying to get that tailback. Even though it was, if it was completed, Mike, I think they would have been well short of the first down. And here we go. It looks like we've got a new punter in. Number 10 has taken over the punting duties. Kadek is back to punt. 
Yeah, Hansworth, I believe, punted twice in the first half and three, ti three times, Mike, yeah, and with, without success. Yeah, so. I, Yoshima was pressured very hard and, le and just kind of was squibbing him out of there. Let's see if Kadek can get good contact on this punt. Here he is, he's back. He hits a big towering punt. Fielded by McCooler. Oh, it bounces off his hands, going backwards. He now will pick it up on his own 25-yard line and try and make up for that muff. We've got he's got some room now. Got a got some good blocking there, and he is such a load to bring down old McCooter. He's brought it all the way back for a 30-yard return. First down and 10 at the 45-yard line for uh, the Carson Graham Eagles. Yeah, bring up excellent field position for the Carson Graham Eagles as they start the second half. I, I tell you, it's just a, a much better punt. But uh, as you said, Braylon had, a, you know, a little bit of a muff on that uh, return, but picked it up and gained some, uh, some big yards. And as you said, Mike, pretty difficult to bring the big man down. And here we go. First down, 10 yards to go. The uh, Carson Graham Eagles with trips down to their right-hand side. Marshall looking over the field. He's got... Tugan in the backfield with him. Looks like he's got some second team receivers. Look nice to get some uh, other uh, players into the old fence. There we go. Marshall looking downfield and he is wrapped up for a sack. That's a big defensive play by Carter Elliott. Number 53 made the play there. Just came through the middle and made a good play on the quarterback, Marshall, there. Yeah, nice job by the veteran Carter Elliott to come from that defensive end position and uh, show a little spark for this Hansworth defense. A two-way player, outstanding player for the Hansworth Royals, Carter Elliott. Big play, Carter. Oh, we've got a new quarterback in for Carson. Dryden Shaw, yeah. he's a, Yeah, it's nice to see... Uh, I believe it's Dryden Shaw is the second team quarterback for the Carson Graham Eagles. And uh, we've got our roster a little bit, shows a little bit different from uh, what we're seeing here. But I believe it is uh, Dryden is the second team quarterback. So a uh, nice throw to start the second half for Dryden to get, uh, pick up a few yards. And he swings it out so again on third down. And that'll bring up fourth down. And that was the, a quick three and out for both teams to start the second half. Just trying to get the ball out to, um, uh, again, to Kai Nickel in the open field. And uh, just a little outside of it, there's uh, Coach Brady going for it again. Yeah, it's, this is a fourth down try with a, with a new quarterback in. That's quite a play. It's quite an opportunity for them. So here we go. He's got trips up to his left-hand side, a single receiver down on the right. He's looking left, looking left, looking left. Throws it over the middle. He, oh, and a great catch. That'll help out the young quarterback. Eric Town went up and got that ball to, com to convert the long fourth down play. A nice pass by Shaw. That'll bring up first and 10 on the 25 yard line. Yeah, nice job by Dryden Shaw, just staying in the pocket, looking at his veteran receiver. He tried to hit him on the first down as well and coming back to the post pattern. Nice catch by Eric. Here we go. We've got a, an inside handoff to Nichols and a nice oh, play by the fumble. ball. Oh, the ball is on the ground. Looks like Carson was able to fall on it. One of their offensive linemen looks like dove on it. Shaw was also in there trying to recover the ball. Yeah, it'll bring up second down and really no gain on the play. So Carson, once again, we know will go quickly here. Shaw looking into the bench for the signal for the play call. Here we go. Yeah, we have some young receivers out on the field here. Shaw looking around, flushed out of the pocket, throws and delivers a nice ball over the middle, first down. A good squeeze of the ball by Shaw as well. Dryden Shaw from Shaw. Shaw to Shaw. <laughs> We're trying to get, confirm here exactly the roster that we have is not official here, obviously. So sorry if we're uh, making a few mistakes up here, folks. But Carson Graham Eagles on the drive. Canuda takes the handoff, goes over the left side for a gain of about three yards. Very close to the first down. And it is. That'll move the chains along. That'll be first and 10 about the 15 yard line. They're over the ball once again.
Got motion coming down. Once again, handing off to Canuda, goes over the left side. A good tackle there by Oliver Parr. Stops him short of the goal line, but the Carson Graham Eagles are just marching along, Jay. Yeah, a nice job by Oliver Parr there. A nice tackle to come up in the open field to bring down the Carson Graham uh, running back and limit that gain to only three yards. Here we go. Number six with the looking over the line of scrimmage. Gets the ball snapped to him. He's going to throw the ball here. Throws it to a wide open receiver. Number 88, Zach Peterson. He's a great 11. I wonder if that's his first touchdown, Jay. Yeah, nice job by Zach Peterson just finding the open seam in there right over the free safety, kind of running about 12 yards down the field and just curling and running right into that open space. And nice job of those two to hook up for another Carson Graham touchdown. Good drive to start the second half, 45-yard, seven-play drive by the Carson Graham Eagles to start the second half. And, you know, Brian Brady, the Carson Graham Eagle coaches at halftime certainly told the players, hey, it's 0-0, line up. Let's get after this and let's have a good second half. Here we go. They've, we've got the conversion play coming up. A snap, handoff to Kaduda, and K he scores the two-point conversion. That brings the score, the Carson Graham Eagles 42, the Hansworth Royals nothing with six minutes and eight seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, and an opportunity here to tell you a little update from UBC. UBC is playing the University of Calgary uh, Dinos right now, Dinos right now, 24 to nine for UBC. Blake Nill and his uh, UBC Thunderbirds, of course, the starting tackle for the UBC Thunderbird, uh, Thunderbirds. Theo Benedict was a Hansworth Royal. I remember him and uh, Keelan White, receiver. Keelan's playing for Montana right now as a receiver and. Uh, Theo Benedict, I remember those two young men walked in my office as a counselor at Hansworth, and uh, I said, you know what? You guys are going to be teammates someday. You're going to be superstars someday. Certainly they played uh, for the Hansworth Royals, and Theo, six, I think he's 6'6 six, six now, Mike, over 300 pounds of the NFL. Uh, folks are looking at him next year. He uh, Interesting because Theo elected this year to uh, go back to university. Could have gone in the CFL draft. Would have gone very high in the CFL draft, but he elected not to. He's got a chance to possibly get drafted in the NFL this spring. So very exciting times for Theo Benedict. Great kid, and uh, we wish you all the best. And that squib kick guy, Nichols, that gets all the way down to to Kanuka. Kanuka fields the ball and gains about three yards to get it out to the 30-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for the Royals with five minutes and 58 seconds left in the third quarter. Nice tackle by the kicker, uh, Kai Nickel. We talked a lot about Kai Nickel, outstanding young man that I've had a chance to get to know over the years and uh, had a little conversation with Kai and uh, future plans, maybe play some junior football. He's gonna go to BCIT, learn a trade and uh, you know, be a successful uh, journeyman somewhere along the way. But uh, again, great kid, Kai Nickel doing a nice job of uh, hustling down and making the tackle after he kicked the ball off there. And here we go. Hansworth Royals taking over first and 10 on their own 30 yard line. Brim back to pass, looking to his left, throws it out. Completion to Cohen Ames for a first down. That's good positive yardage on first down. That'll move the sticks, bringing up first down, 10 yards to go on the 42-yard line for the Hansworth Royals. That was a nice completion, Jay. It was a nice completion. And, uh, again, we just want the, you know, just the Hansworth Royals just trying to get something going tonight, some positivity out of this. Again, we talked about the fact that, you know, they've got a very difficult, challenging schedule to come up. They're going to be playing Kelowna next week. Then they visit uh, the South Delta Sun Devils, who are a very talented football team out there in Tawasson. So certainly going to be a challenging football season for the Hansworth Royals. And they've got the talent, Mike, and they're early in the season, and I know they're going to bounce back from uh, uh, from this football game. Well, they're very young, too. Their quarterback is a great 11, and you mentioned the offensive line is. Brimman throws it out to Ames for a good gain. He stretched forward close to first down yardage. He'll be about two yards short, but another positive gain on first down. Yeah, bring great effort, too, by Cohen Ames there to just to kind of stretch out, get those extra yards, and bring it up a second and three situation for the Hansworth Royals. We've got four minutes left in this quarter. It'd be nice to see Hansworth just move the ball methodically down the field. It looks like they've got some rhythm passing going now, Jay. 
Yeah, exactly. Just get, you know, I think what they've talked about, Darren Benning, the offensive coordinator and the head coach of this football team is, you know, just get the ball out of, uh, get the ball out of uh, Shane's hands quickly. Just work that pa quick passing game. Keep the ball away from the Carson Graham Eagles. Here we go. First down or second down, three yards to go. Little toss play out of the backfield. Oliver Parr breaks it for about an eight yard gain. First down. That's two consecutive first downs for the Hansworth Royals. They're moving the ball. Brim going over to his coach to get the play for his first down and 10 yards to go on the 41-yard line, moving in for a touchdown. Yeah, and the Carson Graham Eagles, of course, an offense. They substituted some, some of the second-team guys in there, and uh, they've done the same on defense, okay? And uh, uh, they've done the same on defense. They've put some of their second-team guys in here, which is really good to see. You know, a lot of these players, Mike, as you know, they, you know, they practice all week and they don't get a chance to play, but... Uh, it's good to see some of the second, third team guys get into this football game. Brim, Brim da looking over the defense, talking to his receivers. They're in a very tight formation for Hansworth to the top side of the field. Drops back to pass, looking deep to number nine. He's got him there, a little low, incomplete, but I think we've got some pass interference, a little face guarding on the play. That was a nice attempt to Portal. Portal turned around for the ball. The defensive back didn't swing his head around and the flag was thrown. Jay, did you catch the number of the defensive back? Yeah, it looked like number one for the Carson Graham Eagles defending uh, August Portal on that play. Just a, just a straight go route, and uh, Shane knew exactly where he was going to go on that particular play, put the ball up, and uh, initially I thought uh, we were going to have a, a – I thought August was going to make the play on that, but uh, good recovery by the Carson Graham Eagle defender, but just uh, – Look like, as you said, Mike, pass interference against the Eagles is going to bring up a first down for the Hansworth Royals. Yep. So that's three first downs in a row, one by penalty one by and two by pass. And in high school football, it's not a spot foul like it is in the pros. It's a 15-yard penalty for pass interference. So that's why you don't see them moving all the way down inside the 10-yard line. So it'll be first down, 10 yards to go on the 25-yard line for the Hansworth Royals. They've got a little momentum here. Good to see. Yeah, let's see if they can We've punch got this one in. Yeah, trips to the top of your screen. Bring them motioning Ooh, out. Trickery, maybe. No, making sure that everybody's on the right page here. It's very important on, that he's he's a real leader for a grade 11. And now we've got a penalty flag on the plate. Do you think they took too long, Jay? No, no we've got procedure. Yeah. And that happens to the big fellas when they're down in their stance for that long, doesn't it, Jay? Yeah, absolutely. It's not comfortable to be in a three-point stance like that. But I think, Mike, you noticed an uh, important injury there for the Hansworth Royals. Number one, uh, Yoshima looks like he's out of the ball game right now, and substituting is in there is uh, Karen Barham. For yeah, we're, we're not sure what's with Yoshima, but we have noticed he's not on the field. We hope he's okay. Left-handed throw here over the middle. Oh, good, good break up there by Chase Baker. The ball was delivered nicely to Cohen Ames and Baker arrived at the same time as the football and knocked it away. That'll bring up second down and 15 yards to go, Jay. Yeah, excellent play by the defender there for the Carson Graham Eagles coming up and reading that little uh, kind of skinny post route from the Hansworth Royals and uh, nice job of breaking up that play. So here we go, we've got second down, 15 yards to go. Hansworth was in a good rhythm and now just a little shaky on those last two plays. It's amazing what a penalty does, Jay, to the mindset of a team. Absolutely. Okay, we've got trips to the tie side. We've got Ames now down in motion coming towards us. He stays in tight to, and then motions up to the right again. Here we go. We've got a lot of players on the right-hand side. Portal moving up to the top. A little swing underneath to the back, and Parr is met at the same time as the football. That was a great play by Samuels there. Once again, Carson Graham, our defensive backs and linebackers arriving at the same time as the football. Yeah, a nice job by Ethan Samuels, just getting his zone drop, reading that quarterback's eyes in that situation, seeing the back come out of the backfield and doing a nice job of timing his, of timing his hit out so he didn't hit the uh, player too early. And uh, a nice job. Those defensive players, again, from Carson Graham Eagles, they're physical, they're ball hawks, and they really are playing a very, very sound football game. And it looks like Hansworth's content to let the third quarter run out. So we'll go into the fourth quarter. And as we go into the fourth quarter, let's thank our sponsors again. The title sponsor is the Omni Group. The other sponsors are the Donahoe Realty, Realty Group, Blair Photos, North Shore Law, 
Upper Level Plumbing, Western Campus Resources, Team Nike, Venue Kings, Coast Performance and Rehabilitation, and we have community partners as well. Delaney's Coffee, Nestle's Food, the City of North Vancouver, Carson Graham and Hansworth Football Parents, and we do have to really tip our caps to Larry Donahoe who runs this organization and makes sure the Buchanan Bowl is something special. In its 36th year, it's really grown into something that we look forward to on the North Shore, and it is the premier high school football game that takes place in the North Shore, Jay. Yeah, absolutely, and of course, uh, Mr. Buchanan, who Mike talked about earlier, was very instrumental in uh, athletics on the North Shore. John Buchanan, his son, was a coach for many, many years at Carson Graham. Leslie Buchanan, of course, the mayor of our fine city of North Vancouver as well, very, very supportive. I and didn't know that. Very, very supportive uh, family, and... Uh, Again, just uh, great, great folks and uh, great to see all the support. And uh, again, Larry Donahoe, congratulations on another fine, fine event. Okay, so we're is in the third quarter and it is third down. A little, a little back shoulder fade pass, a completion to Cohen Ames. Gets close to the first down. Let's see, are they waving that off as an incompletion? Jay, did you see that as yeah, an incompletion? Yeah, I can't tell here, Mike. It's tough to sell right now. I thought that was an excellent... Uh, an excellent uh, throw on the part of uh, of uh, Shane, as as you said, you know, kind of a back shoulder throw there that uh, is a very very difficult timing route, very difficult uh, pass to complete. But uh, looks like they're bringing it back. Tory Davis, very experienced referee crew that we saw today. There. Uh, yeah, it must have been incomplete. There was no no complaints or issues from the receiver Ames, so he must have bobbled it. And we're a long ways away from that. But gosh, it would have been a big play for Hansworth if they'd been able to complete it. And that does bring to the end of the third quarter with the score 42 to nothing for Carson Graham leading your the Hansworth Royals. We've got 12 minutes left in this tilt. And great to see, uh, you know, th some of these fine athletes here, Mike. I, I believe, you know what, I think we're going to see some of these football players play football at the next level. We're looking through the list of all the alumni that, are, that have played university football, that are playing university, some uh, professional football players, many, many f pro football players, Carson Graham Eagles. Boy, look at the list of uh, guys that have played football, even a couple of NFL, Jerome Pathon, of course, a great receiver for the Indianapolis Colts, Paris Jackson, who I'm very fortunate enough to uh, do some football camps with, still coaching, watch for Isaiah Jackson, his young son, to be a star football player out there in Coquitlam. Glenn Suter, of course, a good friend of ours, and Glenn to this day still says, I don't believe this, Mike, but he still says that he intercepted me three times in the uh, Buchanan Bowl way back in, uh, well, I won't even say the year, but Glenn... Glenn assures me that he intercepted me three times in that football game. I don't remember that. I know we beat him like 20 nothing. Okay, here we go. We're, we're at the start of the fourth quarter here with Hansworth going for it on fourth down and 15 yards to go. The snap is back. McCooter put pressure on him, and uh, McCooter rushed him, so he wasn't able to complete that throw to August Portal. Just a lot of pressure coming from the left side by, McCo by McCooler. Yeah, we talked about that early in the football game, didn't we, Mike? That the fact that Sean Yin and uh, Carter Elliott, those tackles for the Hansworth Rolls, have got their work cut out for them. You know, with Carson Graham running that three-five defense, that three-four defense, it's really difficult to, you know, figure out which defensive end, which outside linebacker is going to blitz on a per, on a certain play. And uh, you know, the player that we've talked a lot about tonight, number five, is certainly uh, for Braylon, has certainly made some big plays for the Eagles. So now we've got running time going here with 11 minutes and seven seconds left. It, we've got first down, 10 yards to go. Shaw back in at quarterback for the uh, Carson Graham Eagles. He, he's got an interesting throwing motion, throws it to his big target, McCooter. He is quite a player, that McCooler. Yeah, I tell you, and it is that we have confirmed, Larry Donahoe, thank you for that information that uh, it is Dryden Shaw. So, um, Okay, so he didn't complete the touchdown to Dryden Shaw. <laughs> it's good to see. <laughs> Uh, again, a young quarterback coming into play. Reminds me a little of Liam Marshall last year. They kind of had that uh, throwing motion very similar. But uh, you know what? They get it done. And uh, we didn't even get a chance to mention, you know, the fact that um, uh, so Liam Marshall. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead. With that's the okay. Play. Dryden Shaw with a quick, quick hitch to uh, for a completion to number 85. He's another missing man on our on our roster. But he's made a couple of key catches in this second half of the game. 
We didn't get a chance to mention Liam Marshall last year's, you know, 3,500 yards of the grade 11 throwing wow. the football. And here's Shaw. Hands off, an inside handoff. Oh, look at this big guy rumbling. Oh, he is gone. Nobody's touching him. What a great inside handoff to Dalen Lewis for the touchdown. That wow. was a 48 yard run for a touchdown. That Boy, is a backbreaker for your Royals. Absolutely, you can see the dejected Royals kind of getting back into the defensive huddle here, but boy, that was a great run up the middle again. Just an outstanding, sure, Dalen Lewis was just, man, yeah. he hit that hole hard. I think he went untouched. How many yards, 48 yards? 48 yard run, wow. yes. And here we go. Two point conversion time coming up. We've got motion, 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 motion by McCooler. Hand off to, the, to Lewis again, and he gets all eight points on that drive. And now Carson Graham is in the positives on two-point conversions. They're over 50%. Yeah, there they go. They kind of cut up there. And, uh, you know, the Eagles are just going to keep it, keep on rolling here, keep on soaring. I shouldn't say that. But oh. anyways, we've got next week, they they have the big trip down to the USA. It's always great. I remember, you know, years past taking teams down to the USA and uh, Vega, we used to play in Vegas. We used to play in San Diego. We used to play in Washington, Oregon. Just a great experience. Good team bonding, especially early in the year. Uh, GW Graham, by the way, last night uh, defeated an American team. So congratulations to the GW Graham Grizzlies. They're ranked up there near the top with Vancouver College. Carson Graham is ranked number three. Hansworth before this game was ranked number eight. But uh, Carson Graham, Napa Vine, we wish them luck next week in Washington. Safe trip. Then they're at Terry Fox, at St. Thomas More, at Vancouver College, home to the Mount Doug Rams. Then they're playing the Notre Dame Jugglers at home, and they're off to play Belmont on the last league game of the season on November 3rd. And then we are right into the playoffs after that, Mike. And uh, again, mark in your calendars of Wild Card Weekend will be the 10th, 11th, Remembrance Day weekend. Quarterfinal action, 17, 18th of November. Semifinals, the, the 25th of November. And then we are in... BC Place for the championship Saturday on December the 2nd. Mark that on your calendars, folks. we got a great season of high school football ahead of us, Michael. Yeah, it's a long season for those players. They'll be playing all the way into December if they make it to the finals. Nickel kicks it deep to Kanuka. Kanuka runs it back. He's got a bit of an opening and then gets... Hog tied down by Chase Baker with a good tackle. Got him a little high, but that's fully clean. First down, 10 yards to go on the 28 yard line for, or on the 30 yard line for your Hansworth Royals. Se seven minutes left in the uh, fourth quarter. We're in running time now. Get a chance here to mention, you know, I think one of the thing great things about football, especially lately, these coaches have been very well trained. They take courses on safety, safe contact, uh, you know, you know, of course, it's a contact sport, Mike, and uh, injuries do happen, but we've had limited injuries tonight, which we've seen, which is fantastic. And, you know, kudos to BC High School Football for making sure coaches are trained, uh, teaching the players. I find that in the game in the last 5, 10 years has really changed. It's become much more safety-oriented, and that's due to the BC High School executive really stressing that coaches get certified, really stressing that coaches do stress safe football. So again, it's uh, it's nice to see uh, coaches getting trained in uh, safe contact. Yeah, that's great to hear, Jay. Brenham in, in an empty backfield, he had trips to his left-hand side, throws it over to the left. And once again, the Carson Graham Eagles with their press coverage, we had a big play by Vermeulen to knock it away. And Cohen Ames was not able to hold the ball, but they're right there. We do have a penalty on the flag on the play yeah we're gonna get a personal foul personal foul oh, against, against Carson yeah against Carson Graham again emotions run high in this uh in this football game and uh you know we've had a couple of and I know coach Brady will certainly talk to his um football team about a couple of personal fouls that uh you know certainly the Carson Graham Eagles cannot afford to uh 
to take in uh, some of the big ball games that they have coming up. Yeah. Got to be controlled, right? Yeah, that's a big 15-yard penalty. And, and do remember, these schools geographically are located very close to each other, so all these players know each other very well. Absolutely. You're right, Mike. Actually, I talked to a couple of players during the week, and, you know, they grew up playing GSL football together. They grew up playing soccer together, playing yeah. basketball together. And uh, yeah, uh, that is a really good point you make. We've got a toss to Canuto over the left-hand side. He cuts back and gains about eight yards. That'll bring up second down and two yards to go. Yeah, these these players know each other, and like nobody wants, there's nobody that you want to beat more than your brother or your friend. Yeah, it, the uh, these coaches all have mentors. So Jay, can you talk about some of the mentors that they have and you've had in your past? Yeah, well, hey, we were lucky enough to have a great coach, of course, in Dave Pierce, our uh, football coach at Hansworth that uh, we're still good buddies with, and uh, you know really changed a lot of our lives and uh, it's certainly the same with uh, some of these coaches we'll talk about as soon as this uh, play is over. Here we go the snaps back fake handoff to Canuda. Brim rolling to his right oh we've got a bit of a grab on the hit on the face mask there the flag came in a little late but a good call. Caddox face mask just got tugged ahead a bit by McCooler I think it was incidental, it was incidental, but it did kind of ring him up. When a big man like that gets his hand on your face mask, you do f tend to feel it, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's, you know, speaking of the coaches, of course, Darren Benning, who uh, was on my staff for many, many years, our defense coordinator, and I was taking over Ryan Jensen, a uh, big part of the Hansworth Royals uh, coaching staff. He was uh, one of the quarterbacks that I was able to coach. Um, uh, again, Alex, um, Benning, who was our middle linebacker for the Hansworth Royals years ago. Uh, coaches that, uh, you know, it's kind of nice to see the coaches that coached under me in the past have gone on to success. Brian Brady was a coach with us with the Hansworth Royals. He coached our JV team many years ago. So, uh, you know, I still remain very good friends. Love talking football with uh, all these guys, getting out with these guys. And, uh, again, it's nice to see... Uh, you know the coaches develop and you know one thing that's important to remember and know is that these coaches are all volunteer coaches these guys you know they don't get paid for doing this and uh, you know it's just out of the goodness of their heart they're giving back to the football game football program and Mike you mentioned the sponsors earlier these football programs they do not get a lot of funding from the school unfortunately so they're kind of on their own. I know Carson Graham has a fundraiser coming up. Hansworth Royals do different fundraisers as well. Most of the football programs around the province will go out and do fundraising events, have uh, special pub nights and so on. So, you know, certainly if you feel and want to, you know, uh, donate to any of these football programs, I'm sure the folks would be happy with uh, accepting any kind of donations that... Uh, they have if you want to give to a worthy cause. Again, these boys are out here every single day, Mike. You drive by Hansworth, you drive, or you drive by Mountainside where Hansworth practices, you drive by Carson Graham. Every day they are out there working hard, playing hard, and uh, representing their schools. So here we go. We've got first down 10 yards to go on the 30-yard line. Hansworth's benefited from two long penalties on this drive. The ball snapped, inside handoff. To Canuda. Canuda breaks a couple of tackles and gains about eight yards. And lastly, Mike, along with those lines, it, you know, the administration is great. Great to have uh, support from the administration from both of these schools. Uh, in the North Shore, of course, Argyle has a football program. West Van has a football program. The Windsor Dukes are keeping rolling. They won the J the double A junior varsity. They've got an outstanding quarterback in Emmett Ward that's uh, moved up, Malcolm Allen, the coach at uh, with the Argyle, well, sorry, with the Windsor Dukes is uh, keeping that program rolling. So thank you administrators and all the volunteers out there that have uh, worked hard to keep these football programs going. Here we go, it's second down, two yards to go. We've got a toss out to K Kanuka. Kanuka catches the corner. Oh, just tripped up as he was making his way to the goal line. Samuels just got a finger on his shoe and was able to bring him down. That brings up a first down though, and this is the deepest penetration I think that Hansworth's had this today. They got deep in the first half, but weren't able to convert. Hopefully they'll be able to put this in just to give those kids a bit of a better feeling on their bus drive home. Absolutely, let's just hope that the Hansworth Royals can, can punch the ball in here and let's see if uh, 
We're going to uh, try to get the ball here to maybe number nine. And, uh, you know, that uh, is a very good combination that uh, you're going to see the kind of Montana rice type. Is it Montana rice or Montana young? Or the, that's well, it's not Montana oh, young sorry, for sure. Uh, rice, <laughs> rice young. There we go. Here we go. So <laughs> here, we, here we go. It's first down 10 yards to go. We've got a... We've got the sweep, the quarterback sweep. We haven't seen that since the first half. And Brigham just carrying bodies down. I think he gained about, let's see, we'll see where they mark that ball. To, but he, that's a very positive yardage on first down. He gained about five yards, bringing them just to the 10-yard line. Yeah, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that clock there, Mike. And I yeah, believe Hansford still has three timeouts left, correct? Uh, yeah, they stopped the play after the personal foul penalty. But I think that was just the referees trying to sort out the sort out what was going on. I don't believe anyone took a timeout on that exchange. So we've got just just around two minutes and 20 seconds left. And Hansworth ball second and five on the 10 yard line, looking to punch it in for their first points of the game. The score is 50 to zero for Carson Graham. A lot of pride on both sides of the ball right now, seeing what'll happen in this exchange. Pretty empty backfield there. Brigham drops back to pass, looks to his right oh throws it and once again Carson Graham's defense is right there Julio was able to knock the ball away from from portal which will bring up the third down five yards to go with a minute and 45 seconds left in the game with the clock still running yeah and let's just hope that again let's see if Hansworth can punch this in they got to really keep an eye on the clock here Mike because yeah. as you know it's running time after it gets to a certain score and kind of a mercy rule that they have and uh, Hansworth's got the three timeouts left they maybe want to utilize one of their timeouts Mike and talk about uh, and you're able to use timeouts during running time Jay I don't yeah, know yeah absolutely okay there you go so that's the rule that we know now first or got third down five yards to go from the 10 fake the inside handoff a little hitch screen on the right hand side he breaks there's, a couple of tackles oh that was a nice run by Ames. Got close to first down yardage. Yes, he does get first down. So it's first and goal with a minute left. Let's see if Hansworth decides to hurry it up to get on the ball here. They've got to get four yards for a touchdown. Yeah, 57 seconds. The clock is ticking, ticking, ticking. They're not over the ball, Jay. This is interesting. Yeah. Maybe and again, you know, hey, just great effort from Cohen Ames. And, you know, there's a lot of bright spots for this Hansworth World team. Of course, our the outstanding quarterback, Shane Brenham, and uh, Cohen Ames. Uh, Michael Caddick's yeah, a great, yeah, great 11. Yeah, absolutely. Portal, Yoshima, Elliott. Yoshima's in grade 11. Their offensive line's in grade 11. They do have a bright future with their junior team winning big, too. Here we go. High snap. Oh, a little bit of a in-and-out route by Parr and Ben. Brenham just kind of missed him, threw it a little bit too outside. And we've got 18 seconds left. This will probably be the last play of the game. We do have a timeout on the field with 15.7 seconds left. I'm just going to run through the sponsors one more time because they've done a great job in making sure that this whole production takes place. The Omni Group is the title sponsor of the Buchanan Bowl, the 36th annual Buchanan Bowl. The Donahoe Realty Group, Blair Photos, North Shore Law, Upper Level Plumbing, Western Campus Resources, Team Nike, Venue Kings, Coast Performance and Rehabilitation, and the community partners that have brought this to you is Delaney's Coffee, Nestle's Food, the City of North Vancouver, Carson Graham and Hansworth Football Parents. And we want to th once again mention Larry Donahoe and his organization committee that brought this together. And Jay, if we don't have time, I wanted to thank you for helping me along in my first broadcast. I really appreciate your help. Absolutely, Michael. You did a great job. Way to go. And uh, it was lots of fun. I wish we had a little bit of a closer football game. But also thank our cameraman, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Good job, Mike. Mike just doffed his hat to all of us, which is a nice gesture. Okay, 15.7 seconds left. This could be the last play of the game. The score is 50 to nothing, but this, this play means a lot to both sides of the ball. Carson will want the shutout, and Hansworth will want to break it. They've thrown the ball over the middle. Oh, and bounced off the hands of August Portal. And that gives us 8.4 seconds left. Hansworth does take another timeout, so we will have another play. 8.4 seconds left. That was an exciting play. Jay, what did you see there? That was a great call, Mike. I thought, you know, as uh, Darren Benning told me throughout the week, their offense is an RPO system, so it's run, pass, option, and... Uh, 
I don't really think that was going to be a run pass option, though. I think they were going to fake that handoff no matter what. A little fly sweep motion coming across, trying to clear that underneath zone. Really well executed play. Great call by Coach Darren Benning. Well executed, and I know that's a play that uh, August Portal would like to have back. And hey, if I was a hands with Rawls, I'd come back with the very same play. Well, I'm here we go. They've got trips out to the right hand side here. We've got Oliver Parr in the backfield. We've got motion coming up to the top of your screen. We've got the quarterback sweep. It was successful in the first half. Can he get the corner? Oh, he bellied out a little bit and wasn't able to turn the corner. That was a lovely defensive play by Jude Perry. And that brings a close to the game. That's the final is Carson Graham Eagles 50, Hansworth Royals nothing. That is another victory. I believe it's six in a row now for the Carson Graham Eagles over the Hansworth Royals. The rivalry will come back. The junior team from Hansworth one big today, and Hansworth has a lot of juniors. What did you think of the game, Jay? Well, I tell you, Carson Graham just showed exactly what they do. They run their offense. They run that uh, hurry-up offense, that Nassau offense, and it was just really difficult for the Hansworth Royals to contain that offense. But give credit to that Carson Graham defense. They were well prepared for this football game as well. So uh, best of luck to both teams. You know, a lot of positives for the Hansworth Royals, and, of course, uh, both of these teams, this was a league game today, Mike. As we know, AAA West Division is a very, very competitive, uh, very competitive division. So try to get out and watch one of these uh, football games this year. Lots of football left this year. And I just wanted to say thank you for everybody who watched the game. This is Mike McSorley and Jay Prepchuk and cameraman Mike signing off from Confederation Field with the Carson Grahams defeating the Hansers Royals 50 to nothing.